MMA Meltdown, powered by science. Available at your local King Supers, Loaf and Jug, Jenny's Market, Circle K convenience stores, and 7 Eleven. Welcome back to another edition of the MMA Meltdown Radio Show here on Mile High Sports, AM 1510, FM 93.7. I'm your host, Matt Sierra, back finally from the NJ, New Jersey, my boy Jay Merck. Back. Man, victorious as well, huh? Yeah. You look a lot heavier. Oh, well, yeah. I put on like 20 pounds. It, sh- <laughs> it shows there. You've now moved to Husky. <laughs> gonna I, haven't, be- I haven't stopped eating yet. <laughs> it's so. going to be an awesome show. Uh, we got Joe Warren in the house with us along with Ron Goldstein. We're also going to have Seth Daniels from Fight to Win on the show. But let's get it started like we always do with uh, J.R. Gordon on the Inked Out Buzz Block. What's going on, J.R.? Dang, no J.R. again? we got to get going Punk on communication <laughs> skills. But uh, here we go. You there, Jr.? I am right here. All right, buddy. We thought you were leaving us hanging there for a minute. <laughs> no, no, you weren't leaving. Now us he's hanging. leaving us hanging. Now you're just going to ignore us. <laughs> Think you're better than? Is he? Is he? Still, <laughs> is he still on the air, Christian? Jr., you there? Yes, sir. Oh, what's going on, Jr.? <laughs> hey, greetings, five fans. Welcome to another Inked Out Buzz Block. How's everybody today? Going crazy, good. Doing well. <laughs> Well, I just want to say Inked Out, as always, is our sponsor for this segment. They are Colorado's MMA Sponsor of the Year for two years running now. You can visit them online at www.inkdout.net, where you can get all your MMA apparel needs, including shirts, sweats, jackets, hoodies, headwear, gear for your pets, and MMA equipment, including mouth guards, rash guards, boxing gloves, MMA gloves, and shin guards. One-stop shopping. That's it, buddy. Inked out. Designed by tattoo artists for tattooed extremists. All right, guys. Thanks for joining in on the Inked Out Buzz Block. First things first, I want to get our congratulations in for our host, Jared Mercado whoop, whoop. for his win last week. Whoop, whoop. Undefeated. And it's his birthday, JR. I know it. Crazy. Yeah, stepping on my toes, Matt. Happy birthday, Jared. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I didn't mean to step on your toes, JR. You got some big feet, though, in my defense. <laughs> hey, I know you guys are going to break down the fight later. So for now, Jared, just accept our congratulations on remaining undefeated in the cage, my oh, man. Thank you. Appreciate it. Right that. on. Good to know. Well, last night at the American Top Team Altitude Gym in Denver was the Ultimate Top Team Fight Night 5 event. We have the of the night moments here, so I'm going to go on with those. The inked out submission of the night goes to Brandon Royval. He won the main event with the guillotine choke at just 31 seconds of round one. It was a pretty entertaining fight. They clinched up and... Mr. Royval's opponent actually grabbed a guillotine when Royval went in to slam him. He went ahead, slammed him anyway, escaped the choke. They scrambled back to their feet. Then it was Royval that went for the standing guillotine. His opponent picked him up, slammed him, uh, sort of returning the favor, but he was able to hold on to it, got full guard, closed off the choke, got the main event win. So pretty exciting main event, albeit a fast one. Yeah, it sounds exciting. And, and, you know, that's the ultimate top team. You know, they're still putting out performances and, you know, exciting finishes like that. So, I mean, as long as the show keeps growing. Absolutely. Then the inked out knockout of the night. You guys are going to recognize this name. It goes to Will Smith for his 15-second round one knockout victory. Oh, you got jiggy with it? That's it. (laughs) His nickname now is the Fresh Prince of Denver. Nice. (laughs) (laughs) As a side note. (laughs) <laughs> this is the second time that he earned knockout of the night. He's done a two fights in a row um, at Top Team Fight Night 4. He earned knockout of the night for a 39-second knockout victory, so this time he cut the time just about in half, went with the 15-second round one win, and came out through one combination, staggers his opponent through a second combination, his opponent backed up straight, left his chin up the air. He ended the combination with a really strong overhand right, and that was it. So congratulations to Mr. Smith on the win. Indeed. Then the inked-out fight of the night goes to Mike Holman and Peter Islet. They had three rounds of really highly entertaining kickboxing. They were the first fight of the night. Everything else ended somewhat quickly, and these guys went out and just put it on the line for three rounds, traded a lot of knees in the clinch, Good punching flurries and exchanged a good number of head kicks that neither one of them really seemed to care about. So it was a great show put on by those two. This sounds like a good show. Yeah. I, I, 
I really wanted to make to that one, but unfortunately, you know, I had some issues that wouldn't allow me to go there. But I appreciate you uh, updating your Facebook with all those posts and everything. Always a good time to be there. Well, speaking of American Top Team Altitude, next Thursday, the 23rd, American Top Team, along with the Colorado Foundation for Physical Fitness and the Colorado Sports Organization, is holding the Sports and Performance Showcase. I'm going to give you guys a little breakdown on that. The event is to showcase performance and fitness demonstration. Vendors come in, uh, sporting vendors from all over the place, as well as fitness and health and wellness industry insiders. And it's going to serve as an, as an opportunity for people to be able to network for the sports and fitness and health and wellness professionals. The event also we're really proud to talk about is going to serve as a kickoff for the Lashley Fitness Foundation. And I'm going to talk to you about that a little bit. The Lashley Fitness Foundation is a youth scholarship and after-school program that's being launched by the ATT Altitude Gym. And this program is designed specifically to serve as a vehicle to empower lower-income youth with the confidence that they need through martial arts in order to become more productive members in society and within their community. Now, guys, we talk all the time about how the MMA world is charitable and community-oriented, and this, what Mr. Lashley is doing here, is just a prime example of that commitment to community. Yeah, I agree 100%. So very cool that they're doing that. You can visit um, the MMA Buzz website, mmabuzz.com, we have a flyer, an event flyer up for that. You can check it out, find out when everything starts, but that's the 23rd. So check it out. These guys are doing great things within the community. I agree. Well, last week we spoke of Colorado-based fight promoter Steve Alley holding Wyoming's first-ever all-women's MMA event, and right now we're happy to say that in front of a sold-out venue, both of the Colorado fighters on the card were victorious. So Stephanie Skinner won by technical knockout in the second round, and Levita Given scored a first-round knockout victory. So congratulations to those two ladies on being part of what really is a historical event. Absolutely, and Skinner, Skinner's been on hold in terms of waiting for a fight for a minute now. Wasn't she supposed to fight Jen Berg at one point? I think she was, and some things fell through. And, you know, one of those things, having a hard time getting some fights and kind of that aggression builds up and then step in the cage and let it go. Sounds like that's exactly what she did. That's awesome. Indeed. Well, <laughs> in other fight results, we at MMA Meltdown and MMA Buzz – Pretty thrilled to offer our congratulations to Mr. Justin Salas for his UFC victory last Wednesday night. Had a great unanimous victory, uh, unanimous judge's decision victory, so congratulations to him on that, and we look forward to more victories from him, hopefully in the pretty near future. I assume you guys checked out that fight? Oh, yeah, of course. Right on. Well, yeah, Justin's the man. I was very happy that he got he was able to get that win. That guy was tough too. So yeah, it was a great fight. So a good card. Stepping up his game, and uh, we're going to look forward to seeing him in the future. And speaking of Colorado fighters that are on bigger shows, uh, we have numerous events to report on right now. First. Colorado fighters Brandon Thatch and Alvin Robinson going to be competing in Canada February 25th in the Instinct 3 event. Now, last time Brandon made the trip up north, he spent more time thanking his sponsors than he did actually fighting because he had such an early round one knockout. So we at MMA Meltdown and MMA Buzz wish Mr. Thatch and Mr. Robinson that same kind of success this time out. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I hope it goes great for him. And Brandon keeps talking about what he wants to do in some of his fights is to display his kicking skills. He always ends the fights before we get to see him throw many kicks. So hopefully somebody will push him a little bit, give him a little bit of a test, and we'll get to see him put some of that on display. Yeah, I agree 100%. Then also, coming up March 2nd, live on HDNet, Colorado's Josh Huber is fighting in the Titan Fighting Championship event. So best wishes for success, Mr. Huber. We hope that goes well for him. Of course, we'll be reporting on the results and watching live on HDNet. 
And additionally, we're happy to report that our friend of the show, Mr. Lamumba Sayers, has been moved up to the main card for the March 3rd Strike Force event. We hope to be reporting on his victory pretty soon. There were some injuries on the card. Some events had to be, or some fights rather, had to be scratched. So Mr. Sayers just keeps moving up and up and up. And, you know, it's one of those things we talk about it all the time. We saw him get his start here in Denver, and now we get to say, hey, I knew this guy win. So best wishes to him. And that's just another example of, of how beneficial knocking somebody out very quickly can be. <laughs> no doubt. And financially. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. Exactly. Sponsorship yeah. dollars Money-wise. just doubled. I love money. <laughs> well, also on that Strike Force card is Colorado native Connor Hune. He's going to be facing Ryan Couture. So best wishes to Connor on that fight. We hope it goes well for him. And that he just has to be one of the most intense individuals that I've ever met. So hope he comes through with a victory. Yeah, oh, yeah. I like following him on Twitter because he says some crazy stuff. <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> Well, our last item on the buzz block this week is the highly anticipated Mardi Gras Brawl event. I know that we're having event promoter Seth Daniels on later to talk about the card, so I'm just going to give out the venue, the time, and the ticket information, guys. Go for it. The show takes place February 24th at the National Western Complex. Event starts at 7 p.m., and you can get tickets at ticketswest.com and King Supers or at www.f2wmma.com. Also, for a chance to win free tickets, you can keep listening to the show today, and you can also text the phrase Mardi Gras, that's M-A-R-D-I-G-R-A-S, to the phone number 720-937-0004. So again, for a chance to win free tickets to the show, Text Mardi Gras to 720-937-0004. Of course, MMA Buzz is going to be cage side with real-time results from the show, and we're going to have those available on the MMABuzz.com Facebook page or on Twitter, at MMA Buzz. And, of course, we'll have a full written recap of the show at MMABuzz.com or MMAMeltdown.us after the event. So I want to say thanks, you guys. Have a great weekend. And after February's finished coming up in March, I believe we have nine events coming up just in March. So either seven or nine. Anyway, it's going to be a May. going to be a jam packed month. So let's look forward to it. Yeah, absolutely. Thank sure. you. Yeah, you, you got to stop uh, forgetting about the baddest man on the planet fighting on March ninth. <laughs> oh, the oh. baddest man <laughs> even walks these streets in Denver. Right on. <laughs> Looking forward to watching your fight, sir. Flip it up there, buddy. <laughs> All right. Be well, guys. <laughs> Thanks, Jr. Joe Warren putting it down. March ninth, and we're going to get into it a little bit later with Joe Warren about his fight coming up on uh, Bellator sixty, Aaron on MTV two. We're going to get into it with Jay Merck a little bit about your victory. Maybe have Ron over here sing you a birthday song. I know right. he uh, has some revealing clothing under his uh, silky smooth actual in his clothing. <laughs> <laughs> Joe Warren's going to go crazy today. I already have a feeling he's going to have some uh, some true diamonds today to say. Uh, also joining us, Seth Daniels. And then we'll give away a couple pairs of tickets to the uh, Mardi Gras brawl here on uh, February 24th. Uh, Jay, uh, Jared, you got some uh, questions? Got some oh, yeah. oh, yeah. All right. Well, this is the MMA Meltdown Radio Show here on Mile High Sports, AM 1510, FM 93.7. We know better than to ride the rides at Lakeside. 1510, 93.7. We are Mile High Sports. drink of the UFC. Knock em Out Fight Gear is a way of life, not just clothing. Knock em Out Fight Gear represents the fighter in everyone. If you fight in a cage, a ring, in the battlefield, on the street, it is an everyday expression of the lives we live. If you go hard in anything you do, represent Knock em Out Fight Gear. Get involved with us today and explain nothing. Knock em Out Fight Gear. Reach us at 
K-M-O-F-G dot Moby or on Facebook or knockemout.com. American Ground and Pound and Mass Destruction MMA have joined forces. The best quality fight gear at great prices. Check them out on Facebook and Twitter at Mass Destruction MMA or MassDestructionMMA.com. We have fought in the cage and hit the mats wrestling and grappling. Become part of the Mass Destruction MMA crew now. American Ground and Pound and Mass Destruction MMA are the best in the biz. Check them out on Facebook and Twitter, MassDestructionMMA.com. The Colorado Fight Book is Colorado's only MMA coupon book for Colorado's MMA industry. We drive you new business, more exposure, more revenue, all at zero cost to advertisers. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter as we tweet local deals. Fight Book is a win-win situation for all Colorado MMA fans and businesses. We give you repetitive exposure to customers who are already interested in your product. Join the best gyms, events, clothing, and equipment suppliers and promoters in the state. At tilt rack the official rack of the AMA Pro Hill Climb Series, you will find the finest products to transport all different types of equipment for your vehicles and trucks. We specialize in mounted aluminum carriers for motorcycles, dirt bikes, mopeds, scooters, wheelchairs, electronic power chairs, and electronic mobility scooters. tilt rack aluminum carriers are simply the best. We now also offer ramps, lifts, jacks, and stands. Please go to tilt rackcom for our racket and strap it contest. Would you like to train with legends such as UFC and Pride heavyweight champion Antonio Noguera, Jeremy Horn, Voice Gracie, Dan Severn, and more? Then Mile High MMA Network is for you. Mile High MMA Network is where fighters and fans come together for your seminar needs. If you're interested in teaching or attending one of our seminars, contact Jeff at 719-623-9504 or go to milehighmmanetwork.com. Again, that's milehighmmanetwork.com. General Nutrition Center has been the authority in sports nutrition for the last 70 years. If you're looking for more endurance, more strength, faster recovery, weight loss, or just for your everyday nutritional needs, GNC has been the answer for the last 70 years. Go to your local General Nutrition Center today and pick up your free gold card to receive 5 to 40% off on all your purchases every day with your free GNC gold card. If you are looking for the ultimate relaxation, better performance and functionality, and a healthier you, then check out A Better Way to Feel. A Better Way to Feel offers clients an alternative solution to pain. Massage can help improve performance in athletes, allow for better functionality, increase recovery time from injuries, and more. Contact Maureen Reardon at 303-888-9515 or go to abetterwaytofeel.com. Maureen taught the massage program at Heritage College and has worked with the Colorado Rapids and MMA athletes. Mention this ad and save 20% off services. A better way to feel, an alternative to pain. We watch Dante open Coors Field with a Blake Street Bob. 1510 93.7. We are Mile High Sports. Hey fans, this is Danny Williams, host of Morning Mayhem on Mile High Sports Radio every weekday morning from 9 to 11. Want to know the best deal in Denver sports? It's tacos at Taco Bell. That's right, whenever the Nuggets score 110 points or more, go to participating Taco Bell locations the next day between 4 and 6 p.m. to get four tacos for a buck with purchase of a large drink. So give us a call on the Taco Bell hotline at 303-297-1510 and we'll go a few rounds. But when the dust settles and the Nuggets score 110 points or more, it's time for tacos. Let me introduce you to Mile High Sports Radio's new neighbors, Pizza and Grill, on 10th and Lincoln, across from our new studios at the Beaufalon. Family owned and operated, Pizza and Grill's fresh ingredients and homemade sauces make for delicious pies. If you're in Capitol Hill, Golden Triangle, Wash Park, or downtown, call Pizza and Grill at 303 837 1111 and enjoy fast and friendly delivery from our neighbors to your front door. Call Pizza and Grill tonight at 303 837 1111 for the best pizza in town. Welcome back to the MMA Meltdown Radio Show here on Mile High Sports, AM 1510, FM 93.7. I'm your host, Matt Sierra, my boy, Jay Merck. This crazy guy over here, Joe Warren. <laughs> nice to be here. He's still, he's still nice angry at JR. Yeah. <laughs> you better not, 
I'm not Gold- angry. I just like to, you know, state the facts sometimes. <laughs> it's a fact. Like Ron Goldstein is now man. with this team. And I do fight on March 9th. <laughs> it is going to happen March 9th, and we'll get into the fight a little bit later. No but I appreciate you guys coming down and hanging out with me and Merck. This guy gets a little lonely sometimes, and he I gets do. a little good. grabby, so it's good <laughs> to have some attention to spread around. <laughs> Jay Merck, 6 and 0. Oh. Yeah. 20 pounds heavier? At least. Break it down for me, buddy. You know, we didn't see the fight. Uh, yeah, well, we were kind of just talking on the break about using your wrestling versus striking, and I knew this guy didn't have much of a ground game. He was just a, a pretty good striker, hit hard. So, uh, yeah, the game plan was to take him down, and I did. And I couldn't quite finish the chokes. I had his back in every round, and uh, the judges were like two rounds, 10-8. So it was a pretty dominant fight, but somewhere in the second round, my shoulder came, started coming out of place. Yeah. But kept going in and out, and that kind of limited me a bit too. But pretty much you're going like this, trying to fill the your Dougie. Hair back uh, yeah, all the Dougie. <laughs> the Dougie. <laughs> nice. Now I I know leading up to that fight that uh one of your previous opponents, his uh training partner had had kind of uh said some bad things during your uh fight prior to that one. Were you able to call him out? No, I didn't have a oh, chance to call him out. But he this. he fought on the card. <laughs> well, the problem is they don't let us do uh in in ring interviews after the fight. What? Otherwise, I could have. But they kind of uh, just get you right out of the cage. So. You're going to have to get that going on on YouTube. But he uh, he was on the card, so I'd like to fight him eventually. Yeah? How did he do? He won. How did he win? He won the decision, but he kind of just kicked the guy the whole time and mocked him and everything. He was really, he's a really cocky guy. Just so. tiptoed it? Yeah, so he's a very cocky guy, so I'd like to fight him. Now, I, I'm not sure if, if you guys follow Jim Eric. You follow Jim Eric on Facebook? This dude took a picture of his after-fight <laughs> meal. And it looked like he had 15 trays from an elementary school. It wasn't all mine. Cafeteria. Mine. <laughs> Get out of here. It wasn't all yours. It wasn't. That wasn't even me in the picture. I took a picture of my friend. but the, With the, your tray. Both you, of our trays. With tra- you laying on a tray with food all over you. <laughs> yeah. It's a messed up picture. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, lengthwise, he could only fit about three Alamar. trays there. <laughs> <laughs> no, they had, they had a uh, 24-hour cafeteria there at about 5 in the morning. We rolled in and <laughs> got wild. <laughs> got wild, he said. <laughs> food junkies over here. Yeah. How are you doing over there, Joe, with your little food issue? You getting ready for fight? How's how's your weight going? Uh, it's way too light, you know. I mean, um, I'm a 35er, but I've weighed, like, this morning, 148. So a little bit light for 145, <laughs> but, you know, and uh, I need to be eating more. But, you know, sometimes I have a hard time doing it. Um, my wife's on me constantly about eating better, so yeah. whatever. You know, I, I get it in, but I'm working hard, so I'm burning a lot of calories. So I'm a little bit smaller than what. You know, uh, this Pat Kern I'm fighting. Yeah, and, and that's not, I mean, I'm, I'm sure it happens, but the majority of the time we're hearing about people not making weight because they're over. Yeah, really exactly. Under. Now, <laughs> you guys, all, all three of you guys were fortunate enough to uh, catch UFC on fuel. I was working, mm, so I didn't on. get to catch anything. Yeah, that That's work for us. You know, we got to scout. Yeah, it's got to work for, work for me, too, but I got a job. <laughs> so, you know, bills come before fights. Plus, I corners. have a Comcast. I have Comcast. Yeah, yeah. You know, they don't throw fuel TV on there. So uh, let's talk about those fights a little bit. I want to hear how they went, especially the uh, Allenberger Sanchez. Start with you, Mark. Yeah, you it was a good fight. Allenberger kind of dominated uh, the first couple rounds and just was out striking them and some heavy ground and pound at the end of the one round. And about halfway through the, the third round, uh, he got his back taken and Diego had the hooks in, was landing ground and pound, nearly got a choke a couple times. And, you know, had a lot of people saying if it was a five round fight that the momentum was. You know, shifting in, in Sanchez's direction. Yeah, but. that's just people talking. Yeah, for sure. I mean, <laughs> he would have got pummeled if it kept going. So. <laughs> yeah, so. Joe Warren's aggressive, huh? Well, I'm I just know. trying to tell you the truth, man. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I know Jake. He's a great wrestler. I just trained with him. Oh, uh, Jake, he he was he looked awesome. I thought his, yeah. his striking looked really good. He dominated the entire fight. Like I said, it was just like the final. Things thing. MMA, man. That's where he's training. They're getting yeah. after it. It was like the final two minutes of the fight. Sanchez kind of put it on him, but you know, he was able to escape at the very end, so. Yeah, it was a good fight. Yeah, it was good. Allenberger was walked away with the win. What did you like about the fight? It was an exciting fight, I thought. You know, I thought Jake, you know, put, kept the pressure coming hard. You know, you still saw uh, that killer instinct um, coming the other way. You know, he's never, Diego's never stopping, which was awesome, and that's what happened at the very end. But I, I think Jake had a lot more in that tank still. was real upset if you saw him right after the fight. You know, he hated that happening, but, oh, yeah. you know, you know that was, it was happens. A, you know, it you was can't. an awesome uh, atmosphere in there because oh, yeah, obviously pro-Ellenberger, yeah. you know, in his hometown. Well, yeah, uh, it was in 
you know, <laughs> Nebraska, and then you know, there's a Nebraska. lot of wrestlers on the card, and you know, oh, yeah, they were fired was excited, up. Man. Now we had talked before this fight. You weren't here last week, so I don't think you uh, you got to get in on this. But a lot of people thought that if Diego got knocked out earlier, this fight ended early for Diego. That it was probably going to be his retirement next. Um, given the showing that he put on, do you guys think that he's going to retire, or do you guys think he's still got some in him? No, I don't think he's going to retire. I mean, he's only 30, so there's no reason. Body wear, though, you know what I mean? Eh, I mean, yeah. I don't think there's – I didn't see any signs indicating that he's ready to retire. Nice. So, nice. Same with you, Joe. Yeah, you know, way? I mean, retirement, everyone talks about it once they get knocked out or some some crap. Like, oh, maybe I'm, I'm – I'm, I said that last time. Maybe I'm going to hang up the shoes. <laughs> I'm like, wait, I didn't even wear shoes, you know? <laughs> you know, so, uh, you know, everyone talks. You know, you constantly hear people talking. But as soon as they throw some more money back in my face, I'm fighting again, you know? And that's exactly what's happening. Exactly. With these guys, once you have a name built, you can fight for money. I mean, yeah. let's be realistic. So, job, so man. if you want to go to work for you know twelve hours a day for the next you know five years for a hundred grand, or get in there and get after it, you yeah. know that's different at that level. It's definitely uh, not not a hard choice to make when you got that right kind of tool, uh, tool set. Now, uh, Stephen Shrove, Dave Herman, Robert Martinez, Chris Holland, you guys were absolutely right. You know, they said that uh, Struve was going to take this feat, uh, standing up or take this fight standing up, and, you know, he did. What do you think about it, Merck? Well, first of all, Dave Herman looked ridiculous. Yeah. <laughs> he dyed all his body hair. I didn't see So it looked like he had a sweater on. <laughs> no, he didn't. He had hair everywhere. That's nice. awesome. It was yeah. crazy. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean, Dave Herman actually looked pretty good in the first round. You know, I thought he won the first round, and then the second round he got dropped with a an uppercut and got mounted and then kind of flurried on from there. Didn't seem like he's uh, worked too much on, on mount escapes or anything, but I'm mean, obviously it's a little bit different when someone's punching you like that. But uh, Especially a person like that, like true. Oh, yeah, he's and he's so so tall that he's able to get so much leverage with those punches and everything. But, yeah, I mean, Herman's been saying before that he doesn't believe in jiu-jitsu and everything, so kind of came back to haunt him a little there. Uh, it would haunt somebody a lot considering the sport that he's in. What about you, Warren? I missed that one. I was uh, running down to get oh, the baby. Oh, it's so. my job. It's my job. <laughs> I was talking about <laughs> little job. shit there. So, uh, Whoa, but, a little stuff. Oh, sorry. A little stuff. Man, did little he not, did this he not guy, have this, this conversation guy, right? playing yeah, ping yeah, pong? Yeah. 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 Playing what ping did Joe Warren say? Oh, of course, of course. Yeah, 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 sorry yeah. about that. It's a family oh, show. Yeah. I'm, <laughs> man, I'm a man on the yeah. Lord. What did you think about it? So, obviously, you can see the It was great. Great fight, man. I love it. I love it. Every, everything you said, it's right on. Big fan. Big right. fan of Big the fight. Big fan of the chest hair bleach. <laughs> <laughs> Apart from those two matches, I mean, and obviously our boy uh, Justin Salas, what fought, uh, what fight stood out to you, Mark? Uh, the Ivan Menzoar fight was awesome. It was only one round, but the entire time there was – Ivan Menzoar got hurt with knees. One of them, I think, was an illegal knee. Then they hit the ground, and uh, he ended up get, taking his back and, and getting the choke. But that was an awesome fight for – the entire four minutes that they fought. So yeah. the whole card was good, though. What well, about you, TJ Jeff? Dillinjald, uh, he is uh, he fought first, and uh, I was just out at you know in Sacramento. I trained with the Alpha Male guys a lot, so he's one of my training partners. I was jacked to see him. Fought a big, tall guy. He was like 5'10", 135 pounds. You know, seventy oh. six inch reach. That's music to my ears. Yeah. You got a guy in here saying that 5'10 is huge. It, it, I'm it is in heavy, huge, man. I'm in heaven. When you're, you're, when you're around. saying 135, it's huge. Okay. The average height in this room is 5'3. Yeah. So. <laughs> That's why I'm, I'm tall in you. I feel That's pretty awesome. good right now. Christian's the giant over there. Look at him. He's all happy. <laughs> That's crazy. Yeah, at one point they showed the the, the like the punch stats for that and it was like 160 punches to four on yeah. the dylan shot yeah. Right? yeah well that so. that's what you you know it's hardcore wrestlers man oh, getting yeah. the job done bro that's how it gets done he he comes in town here a lot and trains with me also so nice um those guys do a lot yeah he looked awesome the game you know the the mma fight scene is it has to evolve you know what i mean there's there's just these it natural athletes back, coming man. out yeah it, now it, it just, always it makes turns it's strikers it's wrestlers it's jiu-jitsu guys you're seeing some nasty jiu-jitsu guys yeah. right now hits the ground it's done you know, I oh, mean, yeah. and that that's, you know, that's what I'm just trying to say. The uh, level has evolved so much now. Yeah. You know, that's uh, there's a lot of new tools, uh, drafting tools and things. You're just seeing a lot of these amateurs can't even believe it. Now, when you, when you talk about evolution of a sport and, and we look, we break it down per style, you know, we got boxing, wrestling, jiu-jitsu. Of these, of these styles, which one of them just can't grow anymore? I mean, we look at striking. You know, obviously we've got to include kicks in there, you know, the, the spinning back, the Superman punches. Of those ones, I mean, which one is going to, fall short of, of continuing to evolve. I don't think there's any of them. You know, it's an arrogant deal. I think uh, bottom line, every sport that we do, that's why it's a mixed martial arts. It evolves. 
You know, you think wrestling stops, and it doesn't stop. I mean, I got to, you know, you come see me. I got a whole new style of wrestling that's just evolved from freestyle and Greco and me winning world championships in both, and it's just me having to get the job done. You're seeing the same thing in striking. You know, I, I, I believe personally and jiu-jitsu, the jiu-jitsu guys are getting so good at wrestling now, they're starting to understand, you know, like the uh, Marias, is Diego and Daniel Marias have been working with me a lot right now, and they're great wrestlers, and they see things different. They're able to talk to me different about situations, not holding positions, but being able to be uh, aggressive from that top position where a lot of wrestlers are. So I, I believe um, just with everyone mixing together, the sports is going to change everything. Oh, yeah, that's what I, I was going to say. I think it's going to get funky, man. These little kids are getting after it. And that's huge for your game, especially particularly for your game because you're a very top, you know, top game dominant type of uh, fighter. Yeah, well, and uh, I attack the body instead of the legs. I mean, these are yeah. things that, People haven't came around yet, you know. You you know you need to grab your high school coach and slap him in the face, you know. Because whoa, uh, whoa, we don't advocate that. No, kind but of stuff. I, I do a little bit because uh, sometimes you know. And if you need help, you know, we're at the Rhino, baby, downtown, and that's how we get the job done. But you know, it's just it's a, it's evolution, like you said, progression. I'm better than my dad was. Yeah, you know, my kid's gonna be better than me. It's just because it happens, you know. If if the sport is uh, um, competitive and aggressive, it gets better. What about you, Mark? Yeah, I think absolutely. I mean, each you know each sport needs to be adapted to MMA. You know, uh, with jujitsu, you know, you have the gi on, you can't punch. So when when you're bringing in MMA, you have to take that into account. Same thing with wrestling. You know, you're not really hand fighting the same way. You're you're starting out from a distance striking, so you got to figure out how to close that distance. So there's always you know that time where you have to figure out how everything ties together. And I think that's where the sport will continue to grow, as as Joe was saying. You know, mm -hmm. jujitsu guys becoming great wrestlers now and and, uh, you know, Joe's now learning, like he said, his striking is really good now. You know, best he's ever been, right? Look at him. <laughs> Bob and Weaving on the mic. I'm just trying to say my head's moving now already. I, <laughs> my hands are up. When I fall asleep at night, I sleep like this. My, With my a tennis ball down, tucked under your chin. You know, chin down. <laughs> Got your Snuggie on. Yeah. So, yeah. I, 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 you know, you can punch as much as you want. I'm going to run straight through it and take you to your back now. Okay? <laughs> we're going like to remember what pays the bills. <laughs> so we're going to talk about a, a little bit about what you got going on next. Obviously, March 9th is a big yep. date for you. Uh, Merck, coming off two wins. I know you were looking to get back into the cage. Obviously, you got Yeah, I'll probably, you know, I'll take a little time just to see, let my shoulder heal up a little bit before uh, scheduling another fight or anything. But Maybe we probably, get you on a Bellator card. That'd be awesome. Six and no. Oh. There's Joe, one person possibly could do that that you guys know. <laughs> mm. He goes, he goes, mm. he goes through. And me. I don't think it's Matt Sierra. No, <laughs> it's, it's definitely not Matt Sierra. <laughs> it's definitely not me. If yeah, you, you know, <laughs> it's an easy favor calls. You know, I talked to Bjorn for like an hour yesterday. He said I got some studs in my hands. He's nice. Like, Let's so book there, it there, up. We got so many cut. We got so many uh, fights, and um, it's so big. You know, our you know our future for Bellator. You know, a lot of money behind it. Yeah, it'll a lot be crazy of fights. Once, yeah. once they get on Spike, that'll be. We tried to have this fight here, actually. Oh, yeah, really? That'd it, be awesome. Yep. It was a problem yeah. with some. When funding. Bellator goes to Spike, that's going to be amazing. Yep, yep. So, I mean, so MTV2 we... is cool. Yeah. But, but Spike Spike's is... going to be great. And since since, uh, since uh, Fox, I mean, UFC went to Fox, it's an open spot. Everyone's used to pe coming to uh, Spike and watching fights. It's going to be exciting. Yeah. The Ultimate Fighter they're used to yep. airing on the. I mean, Spike has been so well groomed by the UFC that it's almost like, man, what did the UFC? They turned Spike into a monster. Isn't the UFC, there. I mean, Ultimate Fighter going to uh, FX? Is? Yeah, and it's going yeah. yeah. to be live. Now. Live, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. going to be crazy. I'll be out there for three or four days uh, helping to coach with Uriah. Nice. You're right. going to be guest guest coaching? Yep. We had Lou Pauly on a couple, uh, couple months back, he was a host. Our uh, coach on the show, wasn't he? Yeah, he was. Yeah, uh, yeah whatever you want. Now, he, now he writes for us. Host, MMA coach, Mal all the same thing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Nice. <laughs> when we come back, uh, we're going to get into some more MMA. This is the MMA Meltdown Radio Show here on Mile High Sports, AM 1510, FM 93.7. We threw Bronco bricks at our televisions. 1510, 93.7. <laughs> Are Mile High Sports. MMA Meltdown powered by science. Available at Circle K Comico, Circle K Shell, and Jenny's Market. Science. The official energy drink of the UFC. 
At tilt rack the official rack of the AMA Pro Hill Climb Series, you will find the finest products to transport all different types of equipment for your vehicles and trucks. We specialize in mounted aluminum carriers for motorcycles, dirt bikes, mopeds, scooters, wheelchairs, electronic power chairs, and electronic mobility scooters. tilt rack aluminum carriers are simply the best. We now also offer ramps, lifts, jacks, and stands. Please go to tilt rackcom for our racket and strap it contest. The Colorado Fight Book is Colorado's only MMA coupon book for Colorado's MMA industry. We drive you new business, more exposure, more revenue, all at zero cost to advertisers. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter as we tweet local deals. Fight Book is a win-win situation for all Colorado MMA fans and businesses. We give you repetitive exposure to customers who are already interested in your product. Join the best gyms, events, clothing, and equipment suppliers and promoters in the state. Come out and support our wounded soldiers with Beatdown MMA Presents the Army vs. Marines 3, The Battle of the Forces, March 10th at the Grizzly Rose. Tickets are available at Ticketmaster.com, The Grizzly Rose, or go to TheBeatdownMMA.com. All proceeds to benefit wounded soldiers. So come support your wounded soldiers by getting your tickets now. For more information, go to TheBeatdownMMA.com. Again, that's TheBeatdownMMA.com. Are you being garnished, never have any extra money, bill collectors won't stop calling? Do you want to file bankruptcy and can't afford an attorney? Let On My Own LLC prepare your Chapter 7 bankruptcy. One of two Better Business Bureau accredited documents companies in the state, they stand by their service 100%. On My Own LLC can help you obtain financial freedom. Start 2012 debt-free. Call On My Own LLC now at 720-690-4743. On My Own LLC are not attorneys and cannot give legal advice. Attention, MMA Meltdown fans. Are you looking for medical coverage but have been denied because of a pre-existing condition or were approved with an astronomical premium and high deductible? Well, put an MMA Meltdown tap out to insurance premiums with guaranteed approval and zero deductibles. And do what MMA Meltdown does and go to ivegotcoverage.com. That's ivegotcoverage.com. And be entered to win two free tickets to the next MMA event at Red and Jerry's and put a submission on high premiums with ivegotcoverage.com. American Ground and Pound and Mass Destruction MMA have joined forces. The best quality fight gear at great prices. Check them out on Facebook and Twitter at Mass Destruction MMA or MassDestructionMMA.com. We have fought in the cage and hit the mats wrestling and grappling. Become part of the Mass Destruction MMA crew now. American Ground and Pound and Mass Destruction MMA are the best in the biz. Check them out on Facebook and Twitter, MassDestructionMMA.com. Knock em Out Fight Gear is a way of life, not just clothing. Knock em Out Fight Gear represents the fighter in everyone. If you fight in a cage, a ring, in the battlefield, on the street, it is an everyday expression of the lives we live. If you go hard in anything you do, represent Knock em Out Fight Gear. Get involved with us today and explain nothing. Knock em Out Fight Gear. Reach us at kmofg.mobi or on Facebook or knockemout.com. We watch Champ's 100 yard pick against the Patriots. We are Mile High Sports. Fred Johnson here with the real life become your own banker success story. A couple in their mid 30s with a newly adopted child came to a seminar but were afraid they couldn't afford to start saving. Sound familiar? I met them at their home where we discussed their financial goals and examined their current spending. They poured through their bills and couldn't find a dime to spare. That's when I noticed the venti latte cup sitting around the kitchen and I asked how many they drank a day. Three or four, they said, per day. Sound familiar? Using my old coaching math skills, I deduced that they were spending over 400 a month that could be going to planning their future. They traded those lattes for a regular old coffee machine and started putting that money back into Become Your Own Bank financial plan. Now they're saving for their retirement and planning for their child's future. If you can relate to this story and you're ready to stop borrowing and become your own bank, give us a call, 303-552-6469. It's Financial Solutions for All on the web at fsforall.com.
Sports Show on Mile High Sports, AM 1510, FM 93.7. Oh, Ron, what's this guy, Joe Warren's got so much information to share. <laughs> Let's call it information. Bunch of knowledge over here. <laughs> yeah, dropping mad knowledge. We're supposed to have Seth on the show. Is Seth on, Christian? Man, Seth is leaving us Seth? hanging, man. Help us. He's going crazy. Always big well, league in us. Well, we, <laughs> <laughs> big league, that's hard off. <laughs> now, we've got some time, though, and I definitely want to hear you know your thoughts on the subject. But uh, local MMA, since we were going to talk to Seth anyway, um, you know, you're starting to see uh, the next level of guys kind of hitting the break, uh, hitting the big time here. Jay Merck, 6 and 0 fighting out of Colorado, fighting in Colorado. Um, what are some of the names, Joe, you see coming up right now that are that are ready to just launch off into the next step? Well, I mean, I, I've been traveling a lot. I mean, our guys at Factory X at Rhino, those guys are getting it done, the amateurs. You know, um, Marcus will fight his first um, pro fight here at the end of the month. Marcus Davis? Yep. And then, um, yeah, I think there's a – I mean, I see a lot of talent at the Olympic Training Center because I don't, I'm down there tra- yeah. training there a lot. These young kids are like 18 – they're just they're they're bad dudes, you know. They know yeah. they know how to get the job done. They're down there training right now. They know how to. But I, I mean, a lot of the younger guys that I roll with, I mean, I think a lot of them already went pro. So I'm not sure a lot of the amateurs in town, yeah. you know. But he, he, even the pros, there. you know, Jay Merrick, you know, you have a lot of teammates that are getting ready to, you know, pop off as well. I mean, what are some of the big names, pro wise, that maybe we're going to see in the next Bellator, uh, you know, strike forwards? Yeah, pro for elite. Sure. I think well, you know, I think Justin Salas was a guy for a while. That yeah, a lot of us. Chase will get it done. Yeah, Chase Hackett's very good. Chase, uh, I think Hackett will, you know, might be the next step you see out of Denver. Personally, you know, he's just yeah. he's been moving well and he's he's got a good attitude and a good head on his shoulders, sure. and he's 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 a marketable personality. You got to oh, yeah. guys got to understand really funny it. Guy. At this at this uh, level, it's not just your striking ability. You know, it's how you can talk on the, uh, behind the camera and. If anyone likes you, <laughs> right? And he's got one of the nicest mustaches ever. But we do have he Seth does. Daniels. We do have Seth Daniels on the line right. with us now. He did not Hollywood us. He did not big league us. <laughs> What's going on, Seth? What's up, man? I'm sorry, dude. I had to put my kid down for a nap. Oh, oh come on. We all understand hey, that. I know. I know. Yeah, except everyone, for Jay everyone's Merkel, child dude. napping. You got two babies at home right now, screaming at me. I'm sure. We appreciate you coming on, Seth. I mean, Mardi Gras brawl, man. How excited are you to put? Another huge show back to back like that. I mean, the Paramount was fantastic. I mean, Jay Merrick was a part of that. It, it was just electrical there. I mean, what's it like now to have two shows like that? And how much pressure is on you to perform like that? It's exhausting. I hate it. <laughs> 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 um, I, don't, I hate doing them back to back, dude. Um, I normally for me, I like ten weeks in between each show. Um, but for venue reasons, for some reason, I try to work around Ring of Fire schedule and with my venue and it always seems like I wind up having to go back to back January at the Paramount and February at National Western. But the show's gonna be fun. It's a lot different than the Paramount where I get to actually do a little bit more creative stuff than I can do there and have a little bit more fun. Now we we've been fortunate enough to have uh you know both the main and the co main event fighters on the show. Last week's show was, you know, one of the highest rating shows that we had had in a long time. What are some of the matches that you're looking forward to on on the uh, Mardi Gras Brawl card? All the pro fights are really good. I mean, I'm, I only have four of them now. But, um, uh, yeah, the pro fights are really good. I think, honestly, the best probably matchup on the card is Cody Mum and Jeremy Oshheim. That's probably the best matchup on the card that I'm looking forward to the most. And then um, just all the, the four pro fights. The amateur fights are different for me this time because I don't really know these guys. I don't You do a lot of amateur fights. I think last year I did 12 total on all five of my shows. So of the 14 amateurs – no, I'm sorry, now 16 amateurs. I just added two more. So the 16 amateurs on the card, I've only seen two of them fight before. Hey, so that's hey, kind of fun for me because I don't know. I have no idea what I'm looking at. You know what I mean? Yeah. I didn't see these guys for the first time, and their coach has been talking them up. So yeah. other than uh, Chris uh, Chris Goach and Jay Kevin Hernandez, I don't, I don't know who any of these guys are. So that's <laughs> always exciting when you're promoting when you get to see new talent, you know? Yeah, I agree. Taylor Phillips is, is on your card as well, right? Yeah, Taylor's fighting. He's his second fight. He's fighting a kid from Inked Out named Giovanni. I don't know anything about him. I just I don't go to a lot of the local shows because I'm tra- I travel so much. And so um, you know these kids are fighting at the Grizzly Rose and at um, what's it Red and Jerry's and for Steve Alley and all that. So I don't I, I don't see him fight. And so I, I get him for the first time. So I've been hearing really good things about this Taylor kid. There's a couple other good kids on the amateur show, like um, 
Nikolai Navarro. I hear really good things about him. I haven't seen him fight yet. And um, uh, what's his name? George Dominguez. I just signed on from American Top Team. This kid's supposed to be a superstar. So we'll see. I just uh, it's fun for me because I don't know what I'm. I, I don't know what I'm getting myself into. <laughs> For sure, Seth. You mentioned that you uh, you haven't put on much amateur fights, and that that's pretty much the opposite of most shows around here in Colorado. They might have you know one one or two pro fights, and the rest of the cards filled with amateur fights. And you know that's how the promoters are making the money is by you know getting mostly amateur shows. Have you have you felt like a struggle to to you know make money off your shows while at the same time putting on as many pro fights as you have? I don't make very much money on the MMA shows, man. So I, I, I pay my bills with um you know with my tattoo shop and traveling and doing all those jobs like all across the country I, you know i'll be lucky if i ever make more i never usually in my opinion you shouldn't ever make more than what your main event does on a show and maybe that's stupid but you know it's like i usually you know i i make enough to pay my bills but i don't like an extravagant lifestyle so i don't really need the money but um you know i mean it, I, know, I know how it is dude I, I promoted all amateur shows in texas for a while and when i first started that's how i did it you know i had i did no Pro fights my first show, and then I did two, and then I really wanted to establish something different and a higher quality. And the, the really the only way to have a higher quality is to have a better production and to have better fighters. And if you want to just play the amateur fight game, then you can't ever get the better fighters, and you're not building your fighters up for anything. So you know, you're just using these kids to make money off them. If it was honest, man, I, I really don't like working with the amateurs. Um, you know, they flake out a lot. Um, they, you know, they get hurt. They do stupid shit. Sorry, stupid stuff. And um, they just—I don't know. I just—I I, get—I just have better luck with the pros. You know, they just—is that don't, is that sustainable? You know, is that sustainable for you to be able to you know put on as many pro fights you have, or you say you're not you know you're not making very much money? Is that is that something you're going to be able to continue to do? I've been doing it for four years, dude. You know, I mean, it's not about making money. I mean, everybody says that, but. I do a lot of stuff, man. I run sound and lighting for like thirty shows, you know. Now, you know, I don't like I don't drive a fancy car or live in a huge house or anything like that. And my lady works, and you know, I just, I don't have huge bills, so it's just kind of like I live a lifestyle that I really like, and I get to do what I love doing. And well, is not is not a good reason to get a show like Bellator and have like the baddest <laughs> man on the planet have a title shot here, right? We almost had that, didn't we? Well, I don't have any problem with yeah. that. I, mean, I, I, I like Sam but and all those maybe, guys. Over maybe put a little more money in your pocket you know, so you can drive a nicer car. <laughs> well, <laughs> no, but I mean, I, I don't have any problems with, with, with those kind of promotions. You know, they're cool. They they got their thing. I do mine now. I mean, I don't really pretend that I, I think I'm ever going to be, you know, ring the fire and be a, a big show and, you know, a really nice venue. And I've done that before. I did Magnus Arena, and I, I lived through that headache. And it wasn't that fun. You know, yeah, well, then, you know, if there wasn't a guy like you, then a lot of these guys don't get fights. You know what yeah, I'm saying? Exactly. Bottom line, That's I mean, uh, and for you to open up the your doors for these amateurs, it's helping a lot of guys in town. You know what I'm saying? With the guys that train with us, too. So, I mean, we know you don't make a lot of money doing that, but it helps out the fight, you know, the Denver fight scene a lot. Well, I mean, there's there's really no gratification in, like, watching your guys go on to bigger shows. Like, seriously, watching Justin Salas fight in the UFC and watching Ryan Martinez fight in Pro Elite, but that's like one of the most rewarding things I've ever been able to, you know, have for my for for my company. Just because I didn't. I mean, it's not like I built those guys. I mean, I've trained with Justin a couple times, and I've competed, you know, with Ryan. But it's not like I had anything to do with their fight camps. But you know, because I'm not cheap, and I I pay people well, and I give them a shot to fight, and I gave them big fights. They got the opportunity that they needed to move on to the bigger stage. And, that's one of the reasons that Ring of Fire blew up to what it did, because he's always been able to get people to the next level. So to see those people start to get shots because they were fighting on my, you know, my show helped them get there. That that's really rewarding for me. But and also to answer your question, or not really a question, but Titan is coming to town in October. By the way, Mr. Warren. So just thought I'd let you know that. <laughs> hey Seth, I got a quick question for you. It's Ron. I, uh, with your main event being uh, Justin Houghton and uh, Cam Dollar, obviously uh, kind of opposite ends of the state, really. Uh, what are you expecting out of that main event? I'm I'm looking for a pretty fireworks packed uh, main event for that fight. Well, I don't know, man. Like Justin tried to get this event or this fight for three shows, and I turned it down twice. And then Trevor called me and told me, you know. We've got a game plan. We can beat Cameron. 
I was like, he doesn't have the experience. He's like, dude, he's had 16 fights. I was like, I don't care. He doesn't have the experience to fight Cameron. I think Cameron Dollar is really, really good. You know, and he's gotten a lot of flack because he was on the TV show and he lost two fights in a row. But I, I, I helped set up that fight for on HDNet with uh, Carlo Prater just because it was a huge payday for Cameron, you know. And I helped him get that one with Legacy and then he lost to Cody Bollinger, who's also a monster. So, I mean, I think Cameron's really underrated. But Justin's a stud, man. You know, I mean, he's been mauling through everybody he fights and he wants to fight and he's confident. So, I mean, on paper, I think Cameron wins this fight, you know, decision. You know, or I wind up subbing him, but you never know. Justin's in ridiculous shape. Yeah, I've, tra- I've trained. Like, with I, I, trained I with saw Justin. him on Wednesday doing his conditioning, and that kid is a monster. Yeah, yeah you I know? think that's, I, that's the same thing though as the co-main event, though, right? Yep. So I put that on, which is funny because they're both actually getting paid exactly double what I paid him the first time that they fought. But when uh, Robert and Chris fought the first time, that went exactly how I thought it was going to go. You know, Chris threw bombs, Robert flipped it, hook left hook knocked him out. I'm not so confident this time that's going to end the same way. I've trained with Chris Holland, and that kid's a monster. You know, Robert's really tough, too, though, so I don't really know about that one. Then the Adam, the Cody Moma, Jeremy Oshheim fight, I can't really pick a winner in that one. Nobody knows who Jeremy Oshheim is, but pay attention when you see him. That kid's a beast. Six and foot then, five, uh, isn't he? Adam, Adam and Six TJ five. will be fun because it's like two kind of traditional, like, fighters that are, you know, all about the spirituality of fighting and all that stuff. Fighting, uh, that's fun to watch to me. For sure, for sure. Now, apart from all the MMA things that you put on here locally, but you, you do travel back to Texas quite a bit. You know, you're, you're going to be part of the Arnold Classic. You know, how do you really manage all that? I mean, really, it's got to be tough to be able to handle all that. I mean, you talk about you're not somebody like the Ring of Fire, but the reality of it is is you got more pressure on you. you got more of a workload than Sven does just because of the different stuff that you do do. Well, I um, I used to manage. I said duty. What? I saw. I heard that. I used to manage <laughs> a thousand people at Twenty Four Hour Fitness, Jeez. and um, I used to work like ninety hours a week. And I used to have to go to a job where I wore a collared shirt and a name tag. <laughs> and now, was that before I the sit tattoos? On my couch, and I watch. Like I was working a couple nights ago, watching Hobo with a shotgun. So I don't, I don't really consider it work. Like what I do, it's just you know I get to travel and meet a bunch of new people and do a bunch of cool stuff and get stuff for free, and um, it's just you know it's it's fun for me. I really don't consider it work. It, it gets a little you know it gets a little much sometimes. Like last month was hard. I had seven shows in January. Like we had um, I had that Paramount show, and then at six a.m. I had to hop on a flight and fly to Houston. For a um, for an MMA show that I had that night, and then at 7 a.m. I had to fly back the next day. So I mean that kind of stuff gets to you, and that's when it becomes not very fun. But if I can manage my schedule and, and get everything about two months out, like my next show after this is May May 12th, right? And so I'll try to match that fight card by March 6th. No. You know what I mean? Yeah. So that gives me like. 10 weeks to prepare. If I have enough time to, to get stuff done, it's all good. It just happens if you get far behind and people, you know what I mean? When you get behind on stuff, then it's not fun, and then you don't work and get there. I mean, you don't sleep. You can stay up through the middle of the night, but my lady's super supportive, you know. Even my ex is real supportive, and she helps out with the kids and stuff. So I have a lot, I have a lot of support and a lot of people that help me out. Now, Jay Merck, Joe, and Ron and I were talking before you came on, and you know we were kind of talking about who was going to be the next big name out of Colorado to burst into the to that next level. What are some of the names you got an eye at out? Ooh, uh, you mean from the pro from the pros? Yeah. I don't know any amateurs. Yeah, yeah. yeah pros. 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 Uh, I think the next person, and I hate saying this more than anything in the world, the next person that's going to make it big is Jared Mercado. <laughs> oh. Nice. I, I, Pump I hate that ego it, up. I hate, nobody, I hate there, hearing it. There's really, there's, I don't know if there's anyone that can beat him in Colorado, and he's already six and zero, and so he'll probably get up to ten and zero by the end of the year, and he'll probably get into the UFC. Nice. Um, <laughs> I think, I think he'll he'll make it big. Justin, Justin Gaethje will make it real big. Justin's a beast. Nice. If, if Jay Jose were able to beat Cam- Cameron. I think he'll make it nice. pretty hey, quick. And then Seth, Brandon Thatch, obviously. Yeah, obviously Brandon Thatch. Seth, I definitely want to thank you for coming on the show, bro. We definitely appreciate your time. This is the MMA Meltdown Radio Show here on Mile High Sports, AM 1510, FM 93.7.
by science. Available at Circle K Comic Con, Circle K Shell, and Jenny's Market. Science, the official energy drink of the UFC. Attention, MMA Meltdown fans. Are you looking for medical coverage but have been denied because of a pre-existing condition or were approved with an astronomical premium and high deductible? Well, put an MMA Meltdown tap out to insurance premiums with guaranteed approval and zero deductibles. And do what MMA Meltdown does and go to ivegotcoverage.com. That's ivegotcoverage.com. And be entered to win two free tickets to the next MMA event at Red and Jerry's and put a submission on high premiums with ivegotcoverage.com. The Colorado Fight Book is Colorado's only MMA coupon book for Colorado's MMA industry. We drive you new business, more exposure, more revenue, all at zero cost to advertisers. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter as we tweet local deals. Fight Book is a win-win situation for all Colorado MMA fans and businesses. We give you repetitive exposure to customers who are already interested in your product. Join the best gyms, events, clothing, and equipment suppliers and promoters in the state. Are you looking for a convenient and healthy alternative to fast food? Then Fresh Fit Meals is for you. Our mission is to provide our customers with fresh, quality, healthy meals, giving you a variety of healthy, convenient, and delicious options for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Our meals are labeled with all the macronutrients, including calories, protein, carbohydrates, healthy fats, and sodium. Fresh Fit Meals are fresh and never frozen. We are diabetic-friendly and offer gluten-free meal options as well. Go to FreshFitMeal.com. Again, that's FreshFitMeal.com. Attention sports fans, Altitude is your television home of the Colorado Avalanche and Denver Nuggets. All season long, every game in high definition. Tune in tonight at 6 p.m. as Ryan O'Reilly and your Colorado Avalanche continue their road trip against the Winnipeg Jets. Whether it's a bone-crushing hit or a screaming slap shot, Altitude has you covered. Don't forget to check us out on the web at Altitude.tv and follow us on Facebook and Twitter for exclusive interviews and clips of your Colorado Avalanche. Let me introduce you to Mile High Sports Radio's new neighbors, Pizza and Grill, on 10th and Lincoln, across from our new studios at the Bovalon. Family-owned and operated, Pizza and Grill's fresh ingredients and homemade sauces make for delicious pies. If you're in Capitol Hill, Golden Triangle, Wash Park, or downtown, call Pizza and Grill at 303-837-1111 and enjoy fast and friendly delivery from our neighbors to your front door. Call Pizza and Grill tonight at 303-837-1111 for the best pizza in town. Your sports station, AM 1510, KCKK, Littleton, Denver, FM 93.7, K229BS, Liquid. Ninth, Bellator 60. Yeah, can't, can't wait, man. I defend my belt, 45 belt, and uh, against Pat Kern, good fighter, younger. I think he's like 24, won the 55 tournament last year, dropped down to 45, won the tournament. Supposed to fight uh, Patricio Pitbull again, rematch. He won the tournament, he broke his hand. Um, so he's not able to fight. So I'm going to fight Pat first and then Pitbull. So uh, he's a, you know, just a bigger size guy like we were talking about. He's, I'm sure, 170, 75 pounds. You know, he's uh, he stands right in front of you, flat-footed. Not a very smart thing to do with a killer like me because I'm going <laughs> to take you down and pummel you. So I think that's what it's going to kind of be like, you know, five-round war again. Um, but to put him in a situation where I'm comfortable again in a desperation position for him, make him tired make him have to doubt himself and then uh, just take it all over, rip that belt out of it, rip, take another belt home. Nice. Beautiful belts. Now, you're, uh, you know, I was talking to Ron about you a little bit earlier. You're relatively new to the MMA scene, yeah. but you have an extremely strong wrestling background, right? Yep. Why yep. tell us a little bit more about that? Uh, I was an amateur wrestler for my whole life. So I went to, um, you know, won the States in, in, at this, in, in Michigan and then um, – Went to University of Michigan, go blue, baby. Mm -hmm. Uh, All-American there, University National Champs, both styles. Moved out to Olympic Training Center. Won um, two world championships, uh, uh, Pan-American gold, a World Cup gold, several U.S. Opens. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Normally you hear like Joe Rogan and those guys call people world-class wrestlers when (laughs) they're not actually world-class wrestlers. Joe's actually a a world champion. Yeah, so 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 it it wasn't the best idea, though. So my my teammates like Dan Henderson and He Sims and uh, 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 Matt Lindlin, those guys, they said, listen, it's time. You know, I, I got done wrestling. They said, "Hey, you wanna you wanna fight?" And I said, "No." You know, I was, just, I was like, "I always had a nice shirt and a hot chick." On my arm. You know, I wasn't getting in fights. My you know goals I mean? were met. Yeah. So then, it, then I was like, I went out for train for like three days, and then I got this call. I'm on a, a snowmass snowboarding with my brother, and uh, they're like, "Hey, we got you a fight in Dream 
in three weeks. And I'm like, three weeks? Oh, we fought for four days last week. <laughs> you know, and they're like, 25 grand. I was like, done. Sign the papers. 25 grand? Yeah. I was like, gosh, if I'm going to, if I'm going to fight, why not fight for some money? Yeah. So, but what little did I know what MMA was, you know, it's, uh, they, it was, I jumped in with both feet and then I wouldn't suggest other people did that. You How know? sobering was it when you first stepped in there and you had, <laughs> well, you know, I just, um, I was current world champs. I mean, I was, I was winning. I, I felt unstoppable. So when they said, you know, I think I fought uh, Chase Beebe first. And when I got over there, I didn't know that it was a one ten minute round and one five minute round. <laughs> I thought it was three five minute rounds. Okay, so uh, it was just it was hectic, you know. Got in that ring and everything hits you right in the face, like uh, you're about to get in a fight and you can't get out of this ring. A you know, ten so, minute round? Oh, ten minute first round. You know, I, I don't him. even like to stand in line for ten. The minutes. last like five seconds of the round, I hit him in a, with a knee and a forehead, set, uh, nineteen staples maybe, and he couldn't go out. So happy, he couldn't come back out. I was, I was like, <laughs> oh, thank Man. God. Yeah, I mean, most guys, they start out, you know, they fight some amateur fights. They fight kind of like me, fight some cupcakes, build up their record a little. You, whoa, <laughs> whoa, cupcakes. You jumped in, fought some of the some, some of the best guys in the world. You know, do you think that uh, impacted, like, your development at first, you know, the way you were training, or do you wish you did it differently at all? Or? Well, now, now uh, at the time, I thought that was the best way to do it because I um – you know, I'm older. I, I went through a whole Olympic uh, um, cycle, was eight years after college. So I didn't want to mess around with what you did, you know, which I probably should have. It would have been way safer um, <laughs> because I didn't understand jujitsu striking anything. Yeah. So I jumped right into it like you, uh, um, like well, what I should have done as an amateur, <laughs> right? And, uh, yeah, now looking back at it, I wouldn't do it. But that, at that point, made a big name for myself right away, made some money all, instantly, and now it, I, I kept the ball going. But I've also, this is the third year, and I've fought, nine times in two years and uh i should have fought three more times before christmas <laughs> one of the uh one of the big deals obviously this fight takes place in uh, hammond indiana if i'm not mistaken joe and uh obviously with uh, that being very very close to chicago and illinois uh and and last year's uh tragedy of, of Lindsay passing how important is this for you know for you to defend your title in front of Lindsay's uh hometown who to to me and you obviously is like a brother to you yeah, you know, I don't, I don't feel any extra pressure. It's me in there, not somebody else. Yeah. So, you know, the pressure is uh, me just getting to win. You know, I like it's nice that I'm fighting there and be able to fight in front of those fans. But, you know, I, I, I love you fans out there, but I don't give two craps when it comes down to that <laughs> fight, man, because it's a war in there. So, I mean, I'd like to win in front of everybody I can. I wish I was here in Denver. But uh, at least it's on television, so I can in front in front of everybody. Because I'm sure it should be another great fight. You know, I'm excited about it. Yes. When are we going to be able to uh, see you in Denver? I'm tired of you fighting. In, yeah, uh, yeah. Yuma, I keep trying to Arizona. fight downtown. You know, on the street. <laughs> you know, my management <laughs> keeps saying, "No, bro, stop." <laughs> yeah, well, you can see you, you can see me and uh, me and you fight over uh, at uh, Factory X. You know, come on, see us. <laughs> uh, nice. Yeah, but but I'll tell you, um, I don't know. You know, I, we've been trying to get it back here. I I have a some. Um, Good feeling, maybe after this fight, this pit bull fight, maybe we get it back here. But they want to do it in the summer. You know, they like to do it outside. I like the, uh, you know, we had talked, you know, yep. you, Joe, me, uh, and Ron had talked before about Bellator coming to town before, and there was supposed to be this big old, uh, you know, concert type MTV of series concert, going. Yeah. yeah, with Bellator going to Spike, I mean, obviously the music part of it's going to fall off. But I mean, man, how exciting is it going to be for you to fight on Spike? I mean, because obviously at oh, yeah. one point you do want to go to the UFC, right? Well, well, I don't know. You know, that's that's nice. Uh, I I fight for money, okay, uh, and it's a job for me. So you know, if the UFC is not going to pay me what these other organizations will, then I'm perfectly happy winning belts for Bellator all day. And that's you know, and um, and I I train with the best thirty five forty fivers in the in the country, you know, and they get paid the most, and I'm I I get paid more than most of them, okay. So <laughs> and uh, but seriously, in the talent level that I'm dealing with right now over there. I mean, it's it's a uh, it's a hard day's work in yeah. Bellator, man. Uh, the best guys that they get there, they're putting a lot of money in your face and saying, "Go get the job done." So now, uh, Spike, awesome. You know, I'm excited excited to be doing a lot of cross promotions, TNA wrestling, all all kinds of other stuff like that. Uh, but Bell uh, Bellator on MTV is nice too, like the concert stuff we talked yeah. about. Uh, they said I couldn't dance, so they just they broke that concert down, you know. And I had a good uh, the the I, I could dance. But, yeah, you got to bust the movie. I, I got some. We had Chris Holland in here the other day. He did the robot. You know, You're gonna like, have to beat yeah. the robot, dude. I was downtown last night, and a, a dance party broke out on the corner. One of those flash People yeah. started, uh, like break dancing and stuff. I was <laughs> tempted to get out there. Nice, man. That's awesome. If I didn't have a bad show, I would have show those it, people it, up. It's weird that we keep you know talking to these fighters, and it's 
how uh, the MMA world is crossing over into like the professional entertainment wrestling. You know, yeah. we had a uh, Diamond Dallas Page. Uh, on. Yeah. Oh, this yeah, dude, I know yeah, Diamond. Yeah, this dude's going to go hang out with Hulk and all them crazy. Yeah, cats. they keep doing the uh, TNA wrestling on Spike. It's awesome, man. They, I come in there at color commentate, hold the belt, really? you know, talk a little bit of smack, you know. But That's it's awesome. it's 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 awesome. I, I mean, I enjoy doing that stuff anyway. And just another yeah. form of making money. It's cross promotion, yeah. you know. Yeah. The, the Vicom owns all of them. And it was surprising to me to hear you say that Bellator at that level, I mean, obviously you're at the championship level, but at that level that you're making more money there than at the UFC. Yeah, level. you know, I mean, um, I'm sure the the possibility of sponsors will go up if I if I go there. That's the only thing that kind of gets me. Yeah. But I, I've been with Bellator since their first year, you know, and, um, you know, I'm, I'm pretty much their spokes guy. You know, I get the job done. I've kind of building – you're seeing me the face become of the franchise. better fighter every single time. So you're able, and now I'll have a first uh, rematch ever in Bellator. So, you know, it's a home for me. And, and, you know, Bellator and Bjorn, everything he's, he promises me, he gets the job done. Yeah. You know, and, and these are three years, and they, we've jumped from, you know, uh, Fox Sports, Net, uh, <laughs> you know, ESPN Deportes, you know. I'm huge in Mexico. Okay? Nice. I'm just trying to tell you. Because they're all yeah. at eye level yeah, with you. Yeah, well, they, 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 no, it's free, it's free fighting over there. So like, who's this crazy white guy? You know, I love it, you know. but yeah, He it's, said it's I'm good. big in Mexico. I, yeah, they, I always go to um, uh, the Latino festivals like the uh, – um, where did I go last time? Uh, Atlanta's uh, Latino Festival for Comcast, and I just sign autographs. And that's just another sign of how huge MMA is yeah, really it's getting. getting yeah. I mean, it's getting blowing up. These countries where soccer was the king for a long time, Brazil, Mexico, United States, MMA is the new well, cup of joe. And on top of that, you know, Bellator is bringing in some nasty fighters. I mean, these guys are signing huge, big-name guys with so much talent oh, yeah. that it's – it's unbelievable. I mean, They've done a, you got to feel great about that getting in there with some really stuff. I mean, yeah. big time studs. Well, look at uh, they. You know, my I got knocked out last time, which was unfortunate. Not so, not so nice for me per se, <laughs> but uh, I don't remember it, so I don't. Uh, <laughs> it doesn't hurt me that bad. Per se. But uh, you know exactly. I mean, they, they there's a lot of money on the line. You know what I'm saying? And so that that's really where. You getting these great fighters coming in and getting the job done. I mean, I, I right now my ranking. I think Bjorn said I was like ninth in the world, mm-hmm. dropped from thir- three because I got knocked out. But the, both the guys um, in the league are ranked higher than me, but I have the belt, which mm-hmm. is so you know like Kern's ranked third or fourth, right? And so and um, Pitbull, it, yeah, Pit, well Pitbull's not up there, but what's his name, Marlo Sandro? Yep, and it, but Pat Kern just knocked out Marlo Sandro. Yeah. So. So it's it's that easy, you know, like where he's coming up. He's six yeah. and all that. That means he gets one shot in a big show. These guys need to understand it's one time. Just get a win, you know. I, it doesn't matter how it get, gets the job done. You get a win in a big show, and now you got a name for yourself and you push hard. And I for think sure. you're going to see this real quick with him. I hope you not. Know? I, I got to look for another host. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the hostess with the most. Then, you know, I'm going to start my own show. Of, That's yeah, right. right. Why are you pointing that show? Pod, pod this dude's never even in town. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yes, I'm traveling a little bit. My wife, my wife's pissed. And there's there's a huge difference in in uh, Bellator and the way that Bellator works in the UFC fights. For example, if a champion fought lost, the belt would be gone. You just lost your last fight. You still retain the belt. Yeah, I was at 135 though. You know, I have oh, a belt okay. at 45. So I, I was just trying to double dip it. You know, two belts <laughs> in Olympic championship this year. You know, <laughs> <laughs> two belts Olympic championship. Now it's going to only be one belt and Olympic championship. I can deal with it. Nice, nice. So. <laughs> We're coming to the end of this segment. Coming up on the last two segments of the day, we're going to break down the stacked UFC 144 card. Definitely want to hear your opinions on that. We also still have the two free pairs of tickets to give away to the Mardi Gras card. Jay Merck is going to come up with a trivia question. Joe, you're more than welcome to. Let's just make it somewhat winnable for these guys, Jay Merck. I know you like to go crazy on these guys with the questions. Uh, uh, Got to make it easy for them. <laughs> yeah. This is the MMA Meltdown Radio Show here on Mile High Sports, AM 1510, FM 93.7. We're glad Dick turned down the Olympics. We are Mile High Sports. Science. Available at Circle K Comico, Circle K Shell, and Jenny's Market. Science, the official energy drink of the UFC. 
Come train with Bobby Lashley at American Top Team. Our 20,000 square foot facility offers a full cage, two rings, two large mat areas, kickboxing room, daycare, and much more. Classes for five-year-olds, professional fighters, or mom and dads just looking to lose weight. Programs include boxing, BJJ, cardio kickboxing, MMA, and more. Fighters, ask about a huge discount when you join American Top Team. Mention MMA Meltdown and start at $45 per month and get into the shape of your life. I seriously can't believe you're going to do this. Hey, man, believe it. Look, I know you'll learn stuff that'll help you with a job in engineering, but, buddy, listen, once you walk through those doors, Uh, uh, they're going to... No, 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 no. Yes, yes. I'm still going to be here at home. I'm going to keep my job, work full time, hang out with you, and be a soldier. I don't get it. (laughs) You're completely clueless about the National Guard, aren't you? The National Guard is a unique opportunity and a unique experience. You're a soldier. You serve your community as well as your country. You train part-time close to home. And you do it all while you work or attend college full-time. Look at you. Now you're even thinking about it. You're going to walk in with me, aren't you? All right, wipe that smile Oh, off come on. Face. You know you want to come in. Take the first steps to building your career while serving your community and country part-time. Start at NationalGuard.com. Sponsored by the Colorado National Guard. Aired by the Colorado Broadcasters Association and this station. At Advantage Martial Arts, we teach three complementary styles. Kempo Karate, Mixed Martial Arts, and Close Quarter Combatives. Our students have the option of learning one, two, all three systems. No contracts. Instruction for adults, children, and families. A full-time school with lessons to meet any schedule with private instruction available. By joining the AMA family, you'll gain life-changing skills, goal-setting, a sense of accomplishment, increased confidence, get in great shape, and have fun. Go to AdvantageMA.com. Again, that's AdvantageMA.com. And come check us out. Attention, MMA Meltdown fans. Are you looking for medical coverage but have been denied because of a pre-existing condition or were approved with an astronomical premium and high deductible? Well, put an MMA Meltdown tap out to insurance premiums with guaranteed approval and zero deductibles. And do what MMA Meltdown does and go to I'veGotCoverage.com. That's I'veGotCoverage.com. And be entered to win two free tickets to the next MMA event at Red and Jerry's and put a submission on high premiums with I'veGotCoverage.com. Are you looking for a convenient and healthy alternative to fast food? Then Fresh Fit Meals is for you. Our mission is to provide our customers with fresh, quality, healthy meals, giving you a variety of healthy, convenient, and delicious options for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Our meals are labeled with all the macronutrients, including calories, protein, carbohydrates, healthy fats, and sodium. Fresh Fit Meals are fresh and never frozen. We are diabetic-friendly and offer gluten-free meal options as well. Go to FreshFitMeal.com. Again, that's FreshFitMeal.com. The Colorado Fight Book is Colorado's only MMA coupon book for Colorado's MMA industry. We drive you new business, more exposure, more revenue, all at zero cost to advertisers. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter as we tweet local deals. Fight Book is a win-win situation for all Colorado MMA fans and businesses. We give you repetitive exposure to customers who are already interested in your product. Join the best gyms, events, clothing, and equipment suppliers and promoters in the state. We watch EY welcome Major League Baseball to Denver in style. 1510, 93.7. We are Mile High Sports. The only thing better than skiing Aspen Vale and Sunlight is coming home to the world's largest hot springs pool with an extra $300 in your pocket. That's right. Average room in Glenwood Springs costs 75% less than in Aspen and Vale. Save big on lodging and live a little after the lifts close. Soak in the pool, head to the spa, take the kids to Glenwood Caverns Adventure Park, then enjoy a nice dinner in Glenwood Springs' historic downtown. The choice is clear. You can stay in or stay Glenwood and live large. Save more, play more. StayGlenwood.com. Hi, I'm Jake Jabs. American Furniture Warehouse is about more than just price. With the largest showrooms and best selections of furniture in Colorado, today's AFW has something for everyone. From classic traditional to modern contemporary, you and your family will find everything you need at Colorado's largest selection only at American Furniture Warehouse. You can't go wrong at American. Check out our huge selection now at AFWonline.com. Ninth, Bellator 60. Yeah, can't can't wait, man. I defend my belt, 45 belt, and uh, against Pat Kern, good fighter, younger. I think he's like 24. Won the 55 tournament last year, dropped down to 45, won the tournament. Supposed to fight uh, Patricio Pitbull again. 
rematch. He won the tournament. He broke his hand, um, so he's not able to fight. So I'm going to fight Pat first and then Pitbull. So uh, he's a you know just a bigger size guy like we were talking about. He's I'm sure 170, 75 pounds. You know he's uh, he stands right in front of you, flat footed. Not a very smart thing to do with a killer like me because I'm going <laughs> to take you down and pummel you. So I think that's what it's going to kind of be like, you know, five-round war again. Um, but to put him in a situation where I'm comfortable again, in a desperation position for him, make him tired, make him have to doubt himself, and then uh, just take it all over, rip that belt out of it, rip, take another belt home. Nice. Beautiful belts. Now, you're, uh, you know, I was talking to Ron about you a little bit earlier. You're relatively new to the MMA scene. Yeah. But you have an extremely strong wrestling background, right? Yep. Why don't yep. You tell us a little bit more about that. Uh, I was an amateur wrestler for my whole life, so I went to, um, you know, won the states in in at this, in, in Michigan, and then um, went to University of Michigan, go blue, baby, mm -hmm. uh, all American there, University national champs, both styles. Moved out to Olympic Training Center, won um, two world championships, a, a Pan American gold, a World Cup gold, several U.S. Opens. Yeah. Uh, yeah so. Normally you hear like Joe Rogan and those guys call people world-class wrestlers when <laughs> they're not actually world-class wrestlers. Joe's actually a, a world champion. In yeah. Wrestling. So, so, when, so it, it wasn't the best idea though. So my, my teammates like Dan Henderson and he Sims and uh, 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 Matt Lindland, those guys, they said, listen, it's time. You know, I, I got done wrestling. They said, hey, you want to you want to fight? And I said, no. You know, I, said, <laughs> I was like, I was had a nice shirt and a hot chick. On my arm. You know, I wasn't getting in fights. You my goals I mean? were met. Yeah, so then it, then I was like, I went out for train for like three days, and then I got this call. I'm on a, a snow mass snowboarding with my brother, and uh, they're like, "Hey, we got you a fight in Dream in three weeks." And I'm like, three weeks? I only fought for four days last week, <laughs> you know." And they're like, twenty five grand." I was like, "Done, sign the papers." Twenty five grand? Yeah, I was like, Gosh, "If I'm gonna if I'm gonna fight, why not fight for some money?" Yeah. So, but what little did I know what MMA was? You know, it's uh, uh they it was I jumped in with both feet, and then I wouldn't suggest other people did that. You How know? sobering was it when you first stepped in there? And yeah, <laughs> well, you know, I just um, I was current world champs. I mean, I was I was winning. I I felt unstoppable. So when they said, you know, I think I fought uh, Chase Beebe first. And when I got over there, I didn't know that it was a one ten minute round and one five minute round. <laughs> I thought it was three five minute rounds. Okay, so uh, it was just it was hectic. You know, got in that ring and everything hit you right in the face. Like uh, you're about to get in a fight and you can't get out of this ring. A <laughs> you know, ten so, minute round? Oh, ten minute first round. You know, I, I don't him. even like to stand in line for ten. The minutes. last like five seconds of the round, I hit him in a, with a knee and a forehead. Set, uh, Nineteen staples, maybe. And he couldn't go out so happy. He couldn't come back out. I was just like, <laughs> oh, thank yeah. God. Yeah, I mean, most guys, they start out, you know, they fight some amateur fights. They fight kind of like me, fight some cupcakes, build up their record a little. You whoa, <laughs> whoa, cupcakes. You jumped in, fought some of the some, some of the best guys in the world. You know, do you think that it, uh, impacted, like, your development at first, you know, the way you were training, or do you wish you did it differently at all? Or? Well, now, now uh, at the time, I thought that was the best way to do it because I um, – you know, I'm older. I, I went through a whole Olympic uh, um, cycle. was eight years after college. So I didn't want to mess around with what you did, you know, which I probably should have. It would have been way safer um, right. because I didn't understand jiu-jitsu striking anything. Yeah. So I jumped right into it like you, uh, um, like well, what I should have done as an amateur, <laughs> right? And, uh, yeah, now looking back at it, I wouldn't do it. But that, at that point, made a big name for myself right away, made some money all, instantly, and now it, I, I kept the ball going. But I've also – this is the third year, and I've fought – nine times in two years and uh i should have fought three more times before christmas <laughs> one of the uh one of the big deals obviously this fight takes place in uh, hammond indiana if i'm not mistaken joe and uh obviously with uh, that being very very close to chicago and illinois uh and and last year's uh tragedy of, of Lindsay passing how important is this for you know for you to defend your title in front of Lindsay's uh hometown who to to me and you obviously is like a brother to you yeah, you know, I don't, I don't feel any extra pressure. It's me in there, not somebody else. Yeah. So, you know, the pressure is uh, me just getting to win. You know, I like it's nice that I'm fighting there and be able to fight in front of those fans. But, you know, I, I, I love you fans out there, but I don't give two craps when it comes down to that fight, man, <laughs> because it's a war in there. So, I mean, I'd like to win in front of everybody I can. I wish I was here in Denver. 
but uh, at least it's on television, so I can in front in front of everybody. Because I'm sure it should be another great fight. You know, I'm excited about it. Yes. When are we going to be able to uh, see you in Denver? I'm tired of you fighting in. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Yuma, I keep trying to Arizona. fight downtown. You know, on the street. <laughs> you know, my management <laughs> keeps saying, "No, bro, stop." <laughs> yeah. Well, you can see idea. you, you can see me and uh, me and you fight over uh, at uh, Factory X. You know, come on, see us. <laughs> uh, nice. Yeah, but but I'll tell you, um, I don't know. You know, I, we've been trying to get it back here. I I have a some. Um, good feeling maybe after this fight this pitbull fight maybe we get it back here but they want to do it in the summer you know they like to do it outside i like the uh you know we had talked you know yep. you joe me uh, and ron had talked before about bellator coming to town before and there was supposed to be this big old uh you know concert type mtv of series concert going. Yeah. yeah with bellator going to spike i mean obviously the music part of it's going to fall off but i mean man how exciting is it going to be for you to fight on spike i mean because obviously at oh, yeah. one point you do want to go to the ufc right well, well, I don't know. You know, that's that's nice. Uh, I I fight for money, okay, uh, and it's a job for me. So you know, if the UFC is not going to pay me what these other organizations will, then I'm perfectly happy winning belts for Bellator all day. And that's... you know, and um, and I I train with the best 35, 45ers in the in the country. You know, and they get paid the most, and I'm I I get paid more than most of them. Okay, so <laughs> and uh, but seriously, in the talent level that I'm dealing with right now over there. I mean, it's it's a uh, it's a hard day's work in yeah. Bellator, man. Uh, the best guys that they get there, they're putting a lot of money in your face and saying, "Go get the job done." So now, uh, Spike, awesome. You know, I'm excited excited to been doing a lot of cross promotions, TNA wrestling, all all kinds of other stuff like that. Uh, but Bell- uh, Bellator on MTV is nice too, like the concert stuff we talked yeah. about. Uh, they said I couldn't dance, so they just, they broke that concert down. You know, I, mean, I had a good uh, the the I, I could dance. But, yeah, you got to bust the move. We I, had, I got some. We had Chris Holland in here the other day. He did the robot. You know, You're gonna have to beat yeah. the robot, dude. I was downtown last night, and a, a dance party broke out on the corner. One of those flash People started, yeah. uh like break dancing and stuff. I was <laughs> tempted to get out there. Nice. That's awesome. If I didn't have a bad shore, I would have showed those it, people it, up. It's weird <laughs> that we keep you know talking to these fighters, and it's how uh the mma world is crossing over into like the professional entertainment wrestling you know yeah. we had a uh, diamond dallas page uh-huh, on. Yeah. oh this yeah, dude, I know yeah, diamond, yeah this dude's gonna go hang out with hulk and all them crazy yeah cats. they keep doing the uh tna wrestling on spike it's awesome man they i come in there at color commentate hold the belt really? you know talk a little bit of smack you know but it's, awesome. it's 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 awesome I, I mean i enjoy doing that stuff anyway and just another yeah. form of making money it's cross promotion yeah. you know yeah. The, the Vicom owns all of them. And it was surprising to me to hear you say that Bellator at that level, I mean, obviously you're at the championship level, but at that level that you're making more money there than at the UFC. Yeah, level. you know, I mean, um, I'm sure the the possibility of sponsors will go up if I if I go there. That's the only thing that kind of gets me. Yeah. But I, I've been with Bellator since their first year, you know, and, um, you know, I'm, I'm pretty much their spokes guy. You know, I get the job done. I've kind of building – you're seeing me the face become of the franchise. better fighter every single time. So you're able, and now I'll have a first uh, rematch ever in Bellator. So, you know, it's a home for me. And, and you know, Bellator and Bjorn, everything he's, he promises me, he gets the job done. Yeah. You know, and, and these are three years, and they, we've jumped from, you know, uh, Fox Sports, Net, uh, <laughs> you know, ESPN Deportes, you know. I'm huge in Mexico. Okay? <laughs> nice. I'm just trying to tell you. Because they're all yeah. at eye level yeah, with you. Yeah, well, they, they, <laughs> no, it's free, it's free fighting over there. So like, who's this crazy white guy? You know, I love it, you know. but yeah, <laughs> He it's, said it's I'm good. big in Mexico. <laughs> I, yeah, they, I always go to um, uh, the Latino festivals like the uh, – um, where did I go last time? Uh, Atlanta's uh, Latino Festival for Comcast, and I just sign autographs. And that's just another sign of how huge MMA is yeah, really it's getting. getting yeah. it's I mean, getting slowing up. These countries where soccer was the king for a long time, Brazil, Mexico, United States, MMA is the new well, cup of joe. And on top of that, you know, Bellator is bringing in some nasty fighters. I mean, these guys are signing huge, big-name guys with so much talent oh, yeah. that it's it's unbelievable. I mean, They've done honestly, a, you got to feel great about that getting in there with some really stu- I mean, big time studs. Well, look at uh, they. You know, my I got knocked out last time, which was unfortunate. Not so, not so nice for me personally, <laughs> but uh, I don't remember it, so I don't. Uh, <laughs> it doesn't hurt me that bad. <laughs> but uh, you know exactly. I mean, they, they there's a lot of money on the line. You know what I'm saying? And so that that's really where. If, you getting these great fighters coming in and getting the job done. I mean, I, I right now my ranking. I think Bjorn said I was like ninth in the world. Mm-hmm. Dropped from thir- three because I got knocked out. But the, both the guys um, in the league are ranked higher than me. But I have the belt, which mm-hmm. is so you know like Kern's ranked third or fourth. 
Right. And so, and, um, Pitbull. It, yeah, Pit, well, Pitbull's not up there, but what's his name? Marlo Sanders. Oh, Marlo yep. And it, but Pat Kern just knocked out Marlo Sanders. Yeah. So, so it's, it's that easy, you know, like where he's coming up. He's six yeah. and all that. That means he gets one shot in a big show. These guys need to understand it's one time. Just get a win. You know, it doesn't matter how it get, gets the job done. You get a win in a big show, and now you got a name for yourself and you push hard. And I think you're going to see this real quick with him. I hope you not. Know, and I, I got to look for another host. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the hostess with the most. And then, you know, so I'm going to start my own show. Of, that's yeah, right. right. Why are you pointing at <laughs> this Joe? Pod, pod, this podcast. This dude's never even in town. <laughs> yeah. 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 I'm traveling a little bit. My, wife, my wife's pissed. And there's, there's a huge difference in, in uh, Bellator and the way that Bellator works in the UFC fights. For example, if a champion fought, lost... The belt would be gone. You just lost your last fight. You still retain the belt. Yeah, I was at 135, though. You know, I have oh, a belt okay. at 45. So, so I, I was just trying to double dip it. You know, two belts <laughs> in Olympic dip championship this year. You know, <laughs> two belts, Olympic championship. Now it's going to only be one belt and Olympic championship. I can deal with it. Nice, nice. So <laughs> we're coming to the end of this segment. Coming up on the last two segments of the day, we're going to break down the stacked UFC 144 card. Definitely want to hear your opinions on that. We also still have the two free pairs of tickets to give away to the Mardi Gras card. Jay Merck's going to come up with the trivia question. Joe, you're more than welcome to. Let's just make it somewhat winnable for these guys, Jay Merck. I know you like to go crazy on these guys with the questions. Uh, uh, Got to make it easy for them. <laughs> yeah. This is the MMA Meltdown Radio Show here on Mile High Sports, AM 1510, FM 93.7. We're glad Vic turned down the Olympics. We are Mile High Sports. Drink of the UFC. Come train with Bobby Lashley at American Top Team. Our 20,000 square foot facility offers a full cage, two rings, two large mat areas, kickboxing room, daycare, and much more. Classes for five year olds, professional fighters, or mom and dads just looking to lose weight. Programs include boxing, BJJ, cardio kickboxing, MMA, and more. Fighters, ask about a huge discount when you join American Top Team. Mention MMA Meltdown and start at $45 per month and get into the shape of your life. I seriously can't believe you're going to do this. Hey, man, believe it. L- look, I know you'll learn stuff that'll help you with the job in engineering, but, buddy, listen, once you walk through those doors, uh, uh, they're going to... No, 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 yes, look, yes. look, I'm still going to be here at home. Huh? I'm going to keep my job, work full time, hang out with you, and be a soldier. I don't get it. <laughs> you're completely clueless about the National Guard, aren't you? The National Guard is a unique opportunity and a unique experience. You're a soldier. You serve your community as well as your country. You train part-time close to home. And you do it all while you work or attend college full-time. Look at you. Now you're even thinking about it. You're going to walk in with me, aren't you? All right, wipe that smile off Oh, come on. You know you want to come in. Take the first steps to building your career while serving your community and country part-time. Start at NationalGuard.com. Sponsored by the Colorado National Guard. Aired by the Colorado Broadcasters Association and this station. At Advantage Martial Arts, we teach three complementary styles. Kempo Karate, Mixed Martial Arts, and Close Quarter Combatives. Our students have the option of learning one, two, all three systems. No contracts. Instruction for adults, children, and families. A full-time school with lessons to meet any schedule with private instruction available. By joining the AMA family, you'll gain life-changing skills, goal setting, a sense of accomplishment, increased confidence, get in great shape, and have fun. Go to AdvantageMA.com. Again, that's AdvantageMA.com. And come check us out. Attention, MMA Meltdown fans. Are you looking for medical coverage but have been denied because of a pre-existing condition or were approved with an astronomical premium and high deductible? Well, put an MMA Meltdown tap out to insurance premiums with guaranteed approval and zero deductibles. And do what MMA Meltdown does and go to I'veGotCoverage.com. That's I'veGotCoverage.com. And be entered to win two free tickets to the next MMA event at Red and & Jerry's and put a submission on high premiums with I'veGotCoverage.com. 
Are you looking for a convenient and healthy alternative to fast food? Then Fresh Fit Meals is for you. Our mission is to provide our customers with fresh, quality, healthy meals, giving you a variety of healthy, convenient, and delicious options for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Our meals are labeled with all the macronutrients, including calories, protein, carbohydrates, healthy fats, and sodium. Fresh Fit Meals are fresh and never frozen. We are diabetic-friendly and offer gluten-free meal options as well. Go to freshfitmeal.com. Again, that's freshfitmeal.com. The Colorado Fight Book is Colorado's only MMA coupon book for Colorado's MMA industry. We drive you new business, more exposure, more revenue, all at zero cost to advertisers. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter as we tweet local deals. Fight Book is a win-win situation for all Colorado MMA fans and businesses. We give you repetitive exposure to customers who are already interested in your product. Join the best gyms, events, clothing, and equipment suppliers and promoters in the state. We watch EY welcome Major League Baseball to Denver in style. 1510 93.7. We are Mile High Sports. The only thing better than skiing Aspen Vale and Sunlight is coming home to the world's largest hot springs pool with an extra $300 in your pocket. That's right. Average room in Glenwood Springs costs 75% less than in Aspen and Vale. Save big on lodging and live a little after the lifts close. Soak in the pool, head to the spa, take the kids to Glenwood Caverns Adventure Park, then enjoy a nice dinner in Glenwood Springs historic downtown. The choice is clear. You can stay in or stay Glenwood and live large. Save more, play more. StayGlenwood.com. Hi, I'm Jake Jabs. American Furniture Warehouse is about more than just price. With the largest showrooms and best selections of furniture in Colorado, today's AFW has something for everyone. From classic traditional to modern contemporary, you and your family will find everything you need at Colorado's largest selection only at American Furniture Warehouse. You can't go wrong at American. Check out our huge selection now at AFWonline.com. Science. Available at your local King Supers, Loaf and Jug, Jenny's Market, Circle K Convenience Stores, and 7 Eleven. <laughs> yeah, let's do that. Yeah, you want it? Welcome back to the MMA Meltdown Radio Show here on Mile High Sports, AM 1510, FM 937. Me and Jay Merck trying to figure out how we're going to give away these free Mardi Gras tickets. Two free pairs of tickets. To see this outstanding stat card, Seth Dan has just called and talked to us a little bit about it. You like that one? I do. Joe just uh, flashed me, so that. <laughs> Party <laughs> Gras tickets. <laughs> I guess he's some, he's some brass. Oh, whoa, hey. whoa, whoa. There's some skin in here. <laughs> hey, don't call in now. I won already. I want to play bumper pool now for some reason. Yeah. Jesus. There's a problem there. <laughs> <laughs> Give us a call on the Taco Bell hotline, 303-297-1510. Jay Merck will ask you a nice little question. Maybe we'll just have you sing him happy birthday. Happy nice, birthday, nice. big dog. Or whose birthday is it Yeah, <laughs> Yeah, whose mm-hmm. birthday is it? That's my that. trivia question. It's whoever, tough. <laughs> <laughs> whoever brings me cake gets the ticket. Nice. So let's talk some UFC 144. Huge card, stacked card. Um, a card that I'm definitely happy to pay for come UFC time, uh, UFC 144 time. In uh, Japan, let's... right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Nice. Yeah. I like how uh, Rampage definitely, you know, he had a campaign to get on this one, but, you know, it's where you kind of got it all started, right? Yeah, he's very popular over there. So let's, yeah. let's do like uh, you prefer to do. We'll go through the round table here. Uh, Jay Murky always like to start with the main event and go down. Uh, Frankie Edgar, Ben Henderson, title fight. Yeah, obviously I'm a little biased because uh, I'm, uh, you know, a Jersey boy like Frankie, but I think he will pull this out. I think his boxing, his speed, his conditioning will, will be a little bit too much. I think he'll edge out a decision, you know, just by kind of outpointing him with the strikes and, and being able to defend the, the takedowns. All right, so Merck got Edgar. You yeah, I, you know, I'm, I'm an Edgar fan too, but I don't think he pulls this one out. So uh, it's in Japan. It should be a great audience. I've fought there many times. I think it's going to be sweet at UFC over there. Uh, but I think that Ben's just a little bigger, which hasn't been a problem for <laughs> Frankie before. But uh, maybe the wrestling is going to stop each other, and you never know on the ground. I mean, I think I've rolled with Ben many times. He's very dangerous. Oh, yeah. 
Ron, what do you got, buddy? I uh, it's for me. I, I was just telling these guys before. Uh, I bet against Frankie too many times, <laughs> and and I'm not betting against him this time. I got Frankie winning this uh, by a split decision. Nice. Yeah. Good decision. I feel like a lot of people have uh, bet against uh, Frankie a lot. We're actually making fun of my guy Jeff Sussman because he always he always picks against Frankie. And he's like, oh, I think he needs to drop the 145. Blah, he blah, does. Blah. But how much better do you need to do at 155? Yeah. I and mean, he's it's, the champion. It's longevity. I'm at 45. I'm can't wait to. But he's making he's 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 not cut weight and he's making he's more gonna money. He's going to make the same one. amount of money when you drop down. Just. Personally. But he has security where he's at right now. Yeah, and, and like you're saying, I mean, you you're, yeah, you do this to get down. paid. Yeah, but I'm just saying for longevity in the yeah. sport. I mean, it's not it's not very safe what we do out there. Yeah. And, and the difference between 135, 145, 155 guys, you know, 20 pounds is a big difference. But as long difference. as you're the champion, there's yeah. no need to go anywhere. Right, that's why I'm not going anywhere either. Yeah. I sit right here and <laughs> fight. <laughs> Keep hanging out. Yeah. I think uh, I think these two guys are are uh, you know they marry each other in terms of style. I think Edgar's wrestling is going to edge out Ben's. I'm going to go Edgar. Um, now taking it to the next fight. I mean, obviously the fight we were just talking about it a little. Don't give me the buzz. Get out of here. show. <laughs> Rampage Jackson and Ryan, Ryan Bader. Christian, you're fired, bro. I don't even want to hear your attitude. Uh, Rampage. Never know uh, the drug testing rule, so I, I'm going with uh, Rampage. I got I got Page. Yeah, you got Rampage. Merck. I'm also going with Rampage. <laughs> Uh yeah, I think he I think he's just a better version of of Bader. I mean, I think yeah. Rampage is a little bit diminished at this point in his career, but still enough to to beat Bader. Plus, you know, he he's in a he's going to be in an atmosphere where he's just going to absorb it all. He's going to take it all in. I got Rampage as well. He's a huge. He, they love him. Over he's there. a huge draw over there. Huh? How much do you think he gets paid out there? Shit, way more than they tell you he does. Yeah, <laughs> and uh, we had the uh, the uh, the lucky fortune kind of stuff to watch Mark Hunt his last fight. Um, he's gonna he's gonna be facing Czech Congo. Uh, <laughs> your hair is so nice. <laughs> Who do you got, Merck? Uh, I'm gonna go with Czech Congo. I think he will take Hunt down and ground and pound him. I'm gonna go with Czech as well. Experience uh, over man. this guy. Uh, this is gonna be fun. By this the, uh, the cardio of of cardio Czech is King. definitely better than Mark Hunt, and it, it's Mark ridiculous to even compare the two. It's nuts. Um, you know, we actually got a call. Let's take a call real quick. We got a caller on the line. We got Ryan on the line. What's going on, Ryan? How you guys doing? What's going on, buddy? Happy birthday, Jay Merck. Thank you. Aww. Ryan hasn't uh, paid for a ticket in Colorado in six months now. Yeah. <laughs> it's more like four. He holds the record. He's the from... only guy that listens. <laughs> he's our one listener. Hey, thanks, so for, he's thanks, thanks for tuning in, everybody. buddy. Thanks, <laughs> my mom listens. <laughs> no, so. my, yeah. mom, my mom listens, too. <laughs> Sometimes she gets bored, though. And my mom doesn't show. listen to me until I win. <laughs> and I'm on a loss. <laughs> What's going on, Ryan? <laughs> I, I heard you guys got, talking about uh, 144, and I'm going to make a bold prediction. Ben Henderson, first-round guillotine victory. I don't think that, that, that's not that bold, man. I think that could possibly happen, too. Because I think the way he beat Edgar, if you berserk him, like Maynard did, but I think Henderson's smart enough to choke him, and that's his go-to move is the guillotine. He does Yeah, he's got a good guillotine. guillotine. I think he's, yeah. who was it, Donald Cerrone that he, he got with the guillotine? I think so. Yeah, and Their Jamie Varner as well, I think. so. Yeah, he's got a really good guillotine. Um I don't. Know. Yeah, he's gonna I, submit him with his dreads. I don't think Edgar will let his neck hair. hang out like that. Whip, it, whip him to that. death with his with his hair. <laughs> so do you see him? Do you see him? <laughs> do, you, do you see nice. Henderson dropping him with punches, then choking, or do you or do you think Edgar's gonna be shooting in on Henderson? I think he's gonna shoot in and put his head in the wrong spot, and that's when Henderson's gonna go in for the guillotine. Hmm. I don't see him yeah, moving his neck. I don't, yeah, see, I that I don't see that one. I don't yeah. see that one playing out. But you never know. Obviously, <laughs> but I think if, if he does get a guillotine, I think it's more likely that he hurts him first. And then capitalizes with a choke. I think it clean. Or something could happen like he gets hit with left hook on the chin, and he's out in like 60 seconds. Doesn't remember anything. Mm -hmm. That could very well Things happen, happen that way. But, uh, <laughs> another fight I want to talk about. Who do you guys... Oops, hello? Yeah, hello? Here, go oh. for it, buddy. You <laughs> got you the like attention, Ryan. Uh, Lozon and Pettis. That's a good one. Uh, That's my pick for fight of the night. <laughs> it's going to be fight of the night, I think so. Yeah. Uh, I got Showtime, Pettis in that Showtime one. Showtime is one of my favorite fighters. Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. I, I love Those Pettis. I go out and train Duke Rufus' gym. But Who don't you Those train are... with, Joe? Because I've heard I you travel, say that yeah. with everybody. I travel. I got to get You're the like job. You're like a gypsy. Done. He's yeah. like, oh, Mark Hunt. Mark, Hunt. Mark Hunt's one of my training partners. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We do it's, cardio together. It's, uh, it's sad. We molded our mouth guards sad, together. Sad but true. Sad yeah. but true. Hey, you know what? If you got to get to work in and it's not here, I go places. <laughs> Joe Warren's putting it down. Ryan, we appreciate you calling in, buddy. All right, thank you. Yeah, have a good one. Yes, and Ryan is yeah, nice. one of our biggest supporters. Nice. Sorry, <laughs> Ryan, I didn't mean to. Don't, don't, <laughs> yeah. don't do that to our people. Joe. Should be like three more listeners. Now we have no. <laughs> <laughs> like three more. 
your wife and your I'm kids not, count. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Your wife and your kids exactly. count. Exactly. That's why I said three. <laughs> nice. <laughs> so next up, we got a Jake uh, Jake Shields. How do you say it, Merck? Because you know I'm Akiyama. a Yeah, say the first name though. Yoshihira. Sexyama. So yeah, what? Sexyama is a. That's they call him fun. Sexyama. He's big time over there. We had a. He is pretty smooth. That he's, guy's a great dresser. Have dude. you ever uh, Googled <laughs> images of him? I remember doing an article on him a while back and just Googled images. That's not why there. you Google images. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, I'm You're not going to mm, lie. Pumper I like Chinese food. <laughs> what do you want me to do? He's Japanese. <laughs> exactly. What? Yeah. You're so insensitive. Low main. You just lost five more <laughs> listeners. <laughs> <Don't you? laughs> Our Asian audience is now. It's dwindled <laughs> down. Seriously? <laughs> Gosh. <laughs> You guys so are anyway, horrible. Let's get, let's get to the fight picking. Uh, you know, well, one will be interesting <laughs> to see how one. this is Akiyama. <laughs> this is Akiyama's first fight at 170, so it's always inter- interesting to see someone at a new weight, see how they handle the weight cut. He's uh, in his home. He's home too. Yeah, I mean, he's in his home country, so he's got that advantage. Shield is coming off of two losses, so this is a tough one to pick. I think. I think Akiyama has the edge in the stand up. He's got heavy hands. Um, he's got good judo. But uh, I think, you know, Shields has an advantage on most people on the ground, But even though Akiyama is good on the ground. So I'm going to lean slightly to Shields. Joe? Sexyama. You got Sexyama? He, yep, he's going to get the job done in his own country. Yama, <laughs> yama, yama. What movie is that No from? chance. You don't have no idea. <laughs> I, what figured, you got? You, I, I got you... Shields, man. Shields comes from the Caesar Gracie camp. They don't lose. And, uh... <laughs> and I, got, I, got, I don't I got think Joe you. is a uh, I got Caesar these are Gracie I uh, fans. I got Shields too. I don't. I don't see Shields dropping three in a row. I, at one point in time, I would. Well, said, you never want to drop three. So I would <laughs> never want to drop he's one. He's not going to drop two in a row, but he dropped two in a row. So I mean, that, I mean, Akiyama's coming off several losses as well. So bo- both. Yeah, these but he's guys in a new weight a, class. Yeah, both these guys need to win badly, so they'll be desperate. Yeah, we got another caller, another guy looking for tickets. Maybe Ron. Yeah. Ron's online. What's going on, Ron? Not much. How are you guys doing today? How, how are you calling in when you're here in the studio? <laughs> <laughs> I'm a little confused. You want some tic- uh, you want some free tickets, Ron? Yeah, I sure do. Um, I also had a question for you guys. You know, I'm kind of new to the sport, and I've only I'm familiar with the UFC and everything, but uh, the Bellator is kind of new to me. And I was wondering, you know, the tournament versus matchmaking, and uh, how they like that, you know, versus you know the UFC, and Let's then like it, the Joe. organizational yeah, skill of the organizations and the leadership. Well, I think uh, Bellator's the only difference with Bellator and, and the UFC is that we're a tournament-based organization. We start out where you have to win a tournament to get opportunity to fight uh, for the belt, you know. So that so it's pretty exciting, and they put a lot, lot more money on the line for just the first three fights. Um, it's the leadership. I think Bjorn. I mean, he comes from a great background, and we have a lot of money behind us. Um, the every everything seems to I, I'm into you uh, at the UFC a lot cornering guys and it seems very similar. I just seems like a, a new organization. So I'm I'm proud to be a champ at Bellator and I'm excited. You see, it's going to grow even bigger once it hits spike. Um, and right now, just being on the smaller networks, MTV Two stuff like that. Yeah, some guys aren't being able to see it, but um, just tune in and I'll beat somebody down for you and you'll be an instant fan. <laughs> nice. I will do that. Now let let we got a trivia question for you since you're trying to get some tickets here. Merck, what's the question? Who holds the high school takedown record in the number one in the country all time, most takedowns for a high school wrestler? For high school wrestlers? Well, I don't know really too many high school wrestlers except I'll, for the I'll give you I a hint. It's, it's, it's one of our He's, two he, guests. They they call him the baddest man on the planet. We don't know who that is yet. <laughs> Or in Japan, they call him the Neon and he's Tiger. On this, and he's the on this phone tiger. call. They call me the Neon Tiger nice. in Japan. <laughs> what was that? You just answered the question. Yeah, thanks a lot. It was me. I appreciate it. You won. Congratulations. <laughs> Congratulations. Wow. Easiest win ever. Yeah, yeah. It's Ron, easy. Christian will get your information. We'll have tickets waiting for you at Will Call, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, good one. We got some tough trivia stuff today. You're cut from trivia, buddy. Yeah, no you don't know the answer within five, five seconds. We tell you the answer. Which fighter? <laughs> yeah, and give you the Which fighter ride. on the on the, uh, online today on on the radio? Birthday is it? Who's what? It's tough. <laughs> it's tough. Yeah, it's a tough one. Joe Warren is no Pat Sajak. That's for sure. <laughs> you can't be giving the answers. Ron's Van away. <laughs> she runs. Dang. Yeah, I did that much. <laughs> you do have a nice complexion, bro. I'm just going to put it out there. You, you are know, white. <laughs> Going next, uh, Yushin Okami versus uh, Tim Boach. 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 Yeah. Uh, yeah. That's it. I'd probably go with Okami in this one. Boach is a big, strong guy, pretty tough wrestler. Um, he's he's looked pretty good his last couple outings. He's got heavy hands. 
Uh, Okami, though, is just rock solid. You know, obviously he got beat up by Anderson, but that's not really uh, anything to be ashamed of. Yeah. I think he um, still was able to win, win the striking, defend takedowns, and um, on the ground he, he should have an advantage as well. Good going. O- Okami. Yeah, I'm going Okami, too. You, you get those badasses, I mean, those bad boys you're back in their one. hometown, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, home country, you're going to see some tough guys. Okami. Why are you grabbing the mic all aggressive like Before that? the show, Joe said he wasn't going to curse. He's I know. I have. I was cursing times. all the time. I, uh, uh, in my household, those aren't swear words, okay? <laughs> in my household. This guy's crazy. I got Okami as well. Uh, when we come back, we'll give another pair of tickets away. We'll break down some more UFC 144. Maybe we'll just freestyle a little bit like Ron prefers to do. Uh, but this has been a good show so far, Merck. You yeah. happy with this birthday edition? Yeah. It's been all right, huh? Not too bad. This is the MMA Meltdown Radio Show on Mile High Sports, AM 1510, FM 93.7. We watched Shannon Sharp tell the president to call in the National Guard. We are Mile High Sports. Drink of the UFC. At Advantage Martial Arts, we teach three complementary styles, Kempo Karate, Mixed Martial Arts, and Close Quarter Combatives. Our students have the option of learning one, two, all three systems. No contracts, instruction for adults, children, and families. A full-time school with lessons to meet any schedule with private instruction available. By joining the AMA family, you'll gain life-changing skills, goal setting, a sense of accomplishment, increased confidence, get in great shape, and have fun. Go to AdvantageMA.com. Again, that's AdvantageMA.com. And come check us out. Join the Playroom on Mile High Sports Radio every Saturday from 4 to 5 p.m. It's my new favorite device of ever. It's more than just sports. It's radio with an edge. Lifestyle, current events, social issues, and much more. It's Sports Talk meets Shock Jock, hosted by your man, Blaze. You should be afraid of falling in love with me because of my awesomeness. The most anticipated radio show to hit the airwaves, The Playroom, on Mile High Sports Radio, Saturdays from 4 to 5. Come train with Bobby Lashley at American Top Team. Our 20,000 square foot facility offers a full cage, two rings, two large mat areas, kickboxing room, daycare, and much more. Classes for five-year-olds, professional fighters, or mom and dads just looking to lose weight. Programs include boxing, BJJ, cardio kickboxing, MMA, and more. Fighters, ask about a huge discount when you join American Top Team. Mention MMA Meltdown and start at $45 per month and get into the shape of your life. Do you remember when the internet first came out and you asked yourself, do I need a website? Well, now you need to ask yourself, do I need a phone app? Well, the answer is absolutely yes with AppBuilderNow.com. You can promote your business, increase revenue, share bottom line, and sell your products with AppBuilderNow.com. See what they can do for your business. Go to AppBuilderNow.com for a free trial to see how a phone app will increase your business and revenues. That's AppBuilder.com. What's up, MMA Meltdown fans? Here's your chance to win free tickets for an upcoming MMA live local fight for free. What? Did you say for free? That's right, for free. Simply go to MMAMeltdown.us and click win tickets for your chance to win two free tickets. So this is your chance to check out live local MMA events for free. What? Did you say for free? Yes, that's what I said, for free. Only at MMAMeltdown.us. Certain restrictions apply at MMAMeltdown.us. See if you can figure out this one. What does an old broken down car have in common with me? I'm 10 years old and it's maybe 30. I never run out of energy and it barely runs at all. I don't get enough time to play and it's been driven way too much. I'm cute and it's ugly. I could talk forever and it just sputters and coughs. I can't wait to get outside and run around and it won't move off your driveway. You seem so different, but there is something you don't see. Did you know that Big Brothers Big Sisters will take care of both of us? When you donate that old car or truck to Big Brothers Big Sisters, they'll take care of it. And then they'll take care of me, too. Because of your donation, 
They can offer programs and activities and stuff, and even give me a mentor, or what I call a friend. So even though you can't see it, we have a lot in common. So get rid of that old beater and help me out. Donate your car and help a kid. Call 303-433-3666. Big Brothers Big Sisters of Colorado. Give us one at bat. We'll give you John Vanderwall. We are Mile High Sports. Have you ever thought about the convenience of having cool, refreshing, three- or five-gallon bottled water delivered straight to your home or office? Well, you should. Try Deep Rock Water, serving your local area for over 100 years. Get Deep Rock delivered straight to your door. So whether you're playing sports or simply watching sports, drink Deep Rock. Go to DeepRockWater.com to order your delivery service now or pick up some cases in your local retail store. Go Deep Rock. Participating in sports can play an important role in the healthy development of kids' confidence and self-esteem. Unfortunately, many children in foster care don't have the opportunity to play. Funds, transportation, and other barriers exclude these kids from the athletic programs other children enjoy. Foster Sports provides equipment, grant money, and athletic programs for foster kids to join in the fun around your community. You can help by calling 303-335-8684 or go online to find out more at fostersports.org. We don't just play games, we foster success. MMA Meltdown, powered by Science. Available at your local King Supers, Loaf and Jug, Jenny's Market, Circle K convenience stores, and 7 Eleven. And you're back with the MMA Meltdown show here on Mile High Sport, AM 1510, FM 93.7. I'm starving, Merck. Me too. I'm hungry, man. You know, I'm on I got, a 10,000 calorie a day diet right now. <laughs> nice. <laughs> I got to go hit up FreshFitMeals.com. You know, they got the two different menus you can order. Pre-made meals are the uh, protein by the pound. Go check them out. Uh, FreshFitMeal.com. Enter in Meltdown 10 for a 10% discount. But I put a picture on Facebook earlier, man. It was chicken, squash, and uh, white That's rice. pretty good. It was good, man. It was delicious. Hopefully new sponsor of mine. Oh, yeah? yeah. Hey, you settle down, man. I'm, I'm not just gonna trying to say you're going to be lifting sponsors from us. <laughs> he said, take over as a host. Yeah. I, yeah. I also dance on Thursdays. <laughs> nice. That would explain Look, why I you were lifting you. up your shirt earlier. <laughs> hey, hey, where are you at? The Blue Oyster, or what was it called? <laughs> <laughs> From uh, Police Academy? You remember that? Crazy. You want to talk some more UFC 144, Mark, or you want to talk about something else? Because this guy over here has got stories galore. Yeah, I mean, I think we kind of ran through most of yeah, the, the big fights at 144, so... So what? Kind of, that's a really vague answer. Freestyle? We, we, yeah, let's freestyle. Ron wants, all right, so we got one more pair, <laughs> one more pair of tickets to give away. Oh, nice. You could have, should have kept going. Oh, 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 oh. See, I'm telling you. Bad boys, hey, you bad watch out. what that was. You got to watch out. This guy's I got going skills. crazy. We got one more pair of tickets to give away to the Mardi Gras card here on uh, Mardi Gras Brawl, February 24th. Um, all you got to do is call us. Tell us whose birthday it is today, and then we're going to have you do one more thing. So if you really want those tickets, give us a call. Uh, dial the Taco Bell hotline, 303-297-1510. Jay Merck, you will be uh, a recipient of something very special. How do you like that? I like it a lot. Yeah, yeah. You know, and, and by <laughs> that, by that I'm pointing out. <laughs> I like it a lot. <laughs> by that I'm pointing out, it's the mass suit. We'll talk about that a little bit yeah, later. Yeah, we'll have to bust that out in training. Joe Warren, you said some dude literally jumped over the cage and started flipping you out. Or flipping you flipping off. You out. Yeah, yeah, Bibiano. Yeah, yeah. That's why I call him out all the time. You know, Bibiano Fernandez. He woke up, tried to bar me. They stopped it. Bibiano Hernandez. You Bibiano know? Hernandez. I, I, I constantly try to get another fight. He's smart enough not to take it though. He's dodging. Yeah. He? He's smart man. But Bjorn, Bjorn kinds of promises <laughs> me that I'll get his, get him one day in, in Bellator here. Nice. One day soon. He's training in the U.S. now. I know where you live. Uh-oh. Where's he training at now? Are you stalking in, him? Yeah, I'm hum, hunting this dude down. You don't, you don't, you don't get some <laughs> fake ass win on me and think I'm not coming for you. Ooh. Okay, so uh, he, yeah, he's training up at Matt Hughes right now. The um, emotion going on. Yeah. Straight, straight <laughs> violence. That's all right. It's controlled violence. Yeah. That's the important thing. Focus your intensity. And legal, legal violence as well. In the gray zone. I don't know. I don't know about the legal yeah. fighting he's talking about when he's downtown. Yeah, yeah. You know, trolling bus stops, trying Shit. to fight people. I need to learn how to knock people out. So throw some, some money yeah. on my chest. Say if you get. No it, one's intimidated it. by my lay and pray. I can't really threaten anyone. <laughs> like I will take you down and hold you there. I will hold you <laughs> on the ground. Lay you will go nowhere. Lay and pray. <laughs> <laughs> nice. 
<laughs> Ron, uh, you wanted to freestyle, buddy. Sure. What do you want to talk about? Let's I think do this. It, I think it's interesting last week, and, and I'm glad Joe's on the show because we had some fighters uh, last week who brought up both good points about uh, marijuana use in, in uh, oh, MMA. Yeah. Joe, you're not you're not in the, the closet use. about it. Yeah, you, I'm you, in a closet about it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, whatever, you know, to... it's something that's been, I've used for years in training, so it's not always been the best thing for me, but, um, you know, I, I do use it every once in a while, you know, sleep, some pain relief. <laughs> Anxiety. You got movies. You got dreams where dudes are jumping over the cage. Yeah, you're watching. I got I got, I got violent dreams. That's why I sleep in the basement. You're away watching from my wife. Disney's Tinkerbell. Yeah, I'm, just enjoying it, loving it. I do watch a lot of Disney. I stuff, watch a lot man. of Disney. I got, I got two babies at home. You watch uh, So Random? No, I don't. That I don't show watch. is hilarious. I watch um, Wah Wah Wubsy. Oh yeah, 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 real good. You're at that different age level. I'm still. real excited about that one. Oh, <laughs> Mickey Mouse Club. <laughs> Hey, Joe, let's get your take on uh, what the Nick Diaz suspension means uh, to MMA. Obviously, what, what's your take on uh, Nick being suspended for uh, medical marijuana? Well, I don't, I don't think it's a big suspension, is it? I think they just took some. No, he's, low he's, traces, he's gonna too, get right? He's, Net, he's, low traces, low traces. whatever he's you want to say there. He had a 187, 187 nanograms. He's likely to get I have no idea what that means. Stop nanograms. Somebody that understands. Cut me off one more time. No, no, that means he was smoking the night before, probably. In the van. He's probably going to get suspended for a year. Is he? Because this is a second. By the UFC or by the commission? By the commission. In just that state? No, it's just, no, the commission's a country. All right, cool. Yeah, all commissions respect each other's ruling yeah but it's his second time right yeah. once in california maybe yeah so yeah. he'll be he'll likely get suspended for a year which that's is just crazy, crazy considering all crazy. this stuff and i heard I, I heard he could get fined up to 40 percent of his purse so well i know um i don't think he's maybe second time offense there could be a problem but i know the first offense ufc they don't take it as a huge uh, like a uh, uh, steroids or another but like athletic, the nevada athletic commission mm-hmm. rules very harsh on uh second, so now second you, time offense yeah but it's legal now in nevada so if he would have um if he would have sent them his medical card and explained to him that it was a medical condition before he got there then it would have probably not been a problem Is well really that's, a that's the issue that with he yeah i was gonna say process. that's the issue with well, the <laughs> If he did just went about things the proper way, he wouldn't really. Be. Well, no, those that's who those guys are, man. You know, I mean, I've uh, those are some, you know, that that's the way they win. I mean, that's their that's how they're freaking wired in their head. I mean, and if they're if you're going to use something for training or, or something every time and you can get around it, I mean, you have to be smart enough to at least you have an agent. You know, your yeah. agent knows you're not yeah. getting down all the time, and if he <laughs> does, if he does know that, he should be looking out for you. Yeah, we got sure. a we got a call wrong, Christian. Who do we got? Jeremy. Jeremy. What's going on, Jeremy? Jeremy spoke. Uh, you were asking a uh, question about the birthday today, isn't that Jared Mercado? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Ding, that, ding, that ding, was ding, a ding, difficult ding. one too. Hey, was, was, Jeremy, yeah. this is a two part que- or two part uh process. Let's call it a process. Are you ready for the second? Sure. You gotta sing him happy birthday, bro. Come on, <laughs> let's hear that silky smooth voice. Not the whole thing, just sing me the chocolate caramel voice. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, let's see. Happy, okay. This ain't American it's Idol, real, bro. Real tough one, you don't you have know? to worry about it. We're not going to judge you on your tone. Yeah. I'm sure you're not going to judge me on my All right. Yeah, yeah, you're good. Te- three teeth pulled yesterday, too. You, you can make yeah. up a birthday song. Let's do that. Okay. Make up a birthday song. I don't care. Just get you some tickets. It's my birthday. Right. Yay! Happy birthday. <laughs> Thank you. That was not singing. But yeah, that well, wasn't a song. That was terrible, <laughs> but said, you still win. He, he said, struggled um, through it, though. Oh, uh, here's my version of Happy Birthday song. Happy, happy birthday. birthday. <laughs> <laughs> happy birthday to you. That's money, Jeremy. Christian, get this man's information. Jeremy, you'll have two tickets waiting for you at Will Call to uh, the Mardi Gras Brawl. All right, thank you. Have a good one, buddy. Mardi Gras Brawl. We are like, dude, I sing Happy Birthday. Hold on a second. One, one second, yeah, I had three drink, teeth pulled. Gargled with some salt water. <laughs> <laughs> he was ready to go. He was scared. He had his Miley Cyrus microphone ready to go. <laughs> with his tea pain. I've been preparing for this moment my whole life. <laughs> American Idol. What do you got on this? It'd be better American Idol if they had lost three teeth before the before the date. <laughs> yeah, that poor dude. He called hey, in and won tickets after getting some teeth pulled. Thanks, Jeremy, buddy. Here's Thanks for being a good sport. <laughs> hey, uh. I need some clarification, and, and you guys are, are the perfect uh, people to clarify that. What's going on with Alistair Overeem and the uh, the whole uh, wages getting garnished and 
stuff. So basically, he had a contract with Golden Glory, his management company. Uh, he left them. They're still saying that you know they're owed uh, certain things. One of them being several of his next fights. You know that they still were under contract and deserve to manage him over that course. Yeah, so they were trying to get percentage. their yeah they're trying to get their percentage of it, and they tried to get a cut of his last fight, but they didn't get the ruling in in time. So now they're trying to garnish, garnish the wages for something crazy like four hundred fifty thousand dollars. That's I not know, crazy when you're making two, three million a fight. Hey, that's not even crazy because I know like four or five deadbeat dads that owe that in child support. Shit, Jeez, Ron, who do you hang out with? Ron. I'm looking at Ron. <laughs> yeah, joke. a couple of my best friends. Yeah. Are deadbeat dads. Yep. <laughs> but that's crazy that 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 can make that much money. And you know, speaking of management, Joe, just the way you entered into the scene of MMA, you know, two two three days of training and well, then you yeah, jumped into it. Now Jared knows the benefit <laughs> of, of of management agents yeah. things like that on this level. But how hard was it for you to make money right out the gate without that representation? Well, yeah, I mean, also, I came into the game a whole nother lot of um, titles also behind me, yeah, recent sure. titles. So uh, I started fighting in the three years before that. I won every single thing. So, like, when I went to Japan, they, they put me through a trial system. I went there and cornered uh, Mayhem Miller. Mm-hmm. And this before I was fighting. It was just a friend of mine. So I went over. And he, uh, they ran me through some trials. They, they were actually at the world championships that I won that year in China. So they, they were, they were scouting already. So, so, so for, for me, for me to, yeah, titles, and then for me to uh, be teammates also with Henderson and and Couture and those yeah, guys. It's easy. Real, real easy. One phone call, it's done. You and know? easy to sell too. So you're you know, saying like that if I go champ- out, rack up a T-ball championship, you're you good. Know, maybe dodgeball, you know, something real on my level. <laughs> I might be able to get a nice little contract. We can get you knocked out in any fight. <laughs> hey, if it's for the right money, I'll get knocked out for money. I hear I, that all the time. I see C-list fighters all the time get knocked out for money. Yeah, I, but I do hear that. I'll, I'll get knocked out for that money. 